wow. Oh, hi. Oh, oh. hello. Not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, hello. And welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast, where we put the real and the tea in reality. And you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy. I say something gay. Gay. And I am finishing up my one daily coffee. Um, I had it a little later today, so I still got a little bit left in my cute little lion mug. Um, but if I was drinking something in a smaller mug, I would be doing so in my cup mug. We're just waiting for the day that Eve also pulls one out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? This is mine. <laughs> Donna. No, not, not Donna. Not, not Donna. You know, <laughs> seriously. And you know where you can get your cup mugs now? Where, at, Lana? At Lana G's Creations. Etsy. Com, where you, uh, this is where the home of the official cup merch is. So get your cup merch and all of the other cup merch things that we have and non cup merch things if you want. But just check out Lana G's Creations. Etsy. Com. Period. And we ship internationally, so guess what? There are no excuses. And since I'm here and I got the mic and I have your attention, <laughs> I am Lana, your resident diva, here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea because you know I love me some tea. Purr, not me been a break. <laughs> oh my god. But you know what? She's if you break one, you know where you can get a new one. <laughs> but she's durable because guess what? She's just fine. She's all right, everybody. She's all right. And she she's, is dishwasher safe. Dishwasher safe. But yeah, I'm not drinking out of my cup mug. I am drinking. Please don't because you dropped it. <laughs> I mean, and because it's I'm literally spilling the tea. <laughs> because I'm housing my chip bag in there. So, yep. Oh. I have not my in it. here. <laughs> I have my chip bags in there. So no, I'm not drinking out of that. Mine is not clean. But I'm drinking <laughs> orange sun, I'm drinking orange sun kiss because that's Come what I wanted to drink. Period. Come on, sun kiss. And what's happening, everybody? It is me, Chicago Drag Artiste and Queen of Ivy Park, Eve the Bunny. Pause for applause. Thank you. So I'm uh, wearing a cute little piece from the Ivy Park and Peloton collection. They did a nice little collaboration drop uh, last year, I believe. Yeah, last year. And um, I got a couple of pieces. Very funny story. Like, I didn't end up getting two of the pieces that I wanted to get, so I bought two other pieces. And then they ended up, I guess, over, like, selling or they had some glitch or something like that. So they ended up restocking a whole bunch of stuff. So then I turned around and bought the stuff that I thought that I couldn't buy. So I was like, wow, Beyonce, you took more of my money. <laughs> I'm not Thanks, surprised Mom. at this point, darling. <laughs> it's very much to the point that if you ever hear of me being evicted from my apartment in Chicago, please know that I will probably be living in a tenement made exclusively out of Ivy Park clothing. <laughs> it's probably be a hut or igloo of some sort, but it will be made out of Ivy Park clothing. And it'll probably be as expensive as actual rent in Chicago. So, I mean, hey. Oh, and I'm drinking the tried and true, trusted and faithful Arizona black and white tea because we love her. She's nice. good. Well, I am David Healy, and I don't have a cute intro, but I do have a cute shirt. Um, I am wearing, up until now, we'll see if it changes, I'm wearing my favorite Brazilian drag queen shirt, the one and only Miss Fontana. Fontana! Yes, I love me some Fontana. So, no pressure, um, cast of Drag Race Brazil. Um, and Germany. Fall, and Germany. I might fall in love with you all as much as I did with her. Um, but I am drinking some water. You better let loose. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I wasn't There's no time for that. I got it. <laughs> Yeah, and we are here. It is the premiere. Drag Race Brasilia. Brasilia. 
Woo. What's the capital of Brazil? It is Brasilia. You know what? Yeah. Can I say something? Um, I oh, please. Oh. had a I have a BuzzFeed calendar at work, and me and my coworkers do um trivia every day. And mm -hmm. today's trivia was what was the capital of what's the capital of Brazil? Shut and up. I knew it. I knew, <laughs> it. I I knew it was Brasilia, and nobody else got it right. I was the only one who knew. Um, but I knew it thanks to I, I still know what you did last summer. It comes up in that. I movie. hoped you were going to say that. I literally yeah. was going to say the exact same thing. I was like, that's the only way I know. Yeah, I still know what you did last summer. Oh, uh, that movie was crazy. Shout out to uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt and Brandy Norwood, and Brandy, Final Girl. Getting it wrong. They did not know. They did not get it right. No. But yes, we are here. It is part one of our two part premiere of, of Drag Race Brazil. And it was a premiere that happened. <clears throat> RuPaul likes it. Was a, it was a good premiere. It got me excited. So uh, yes. it wasn't just a premiere that happened. I mean, it was a premiere that did happen, but it happened to get some people excited more than others. I'm excited because I'm excited because I'm looking forward to next week because this one gave the the hope it gets better factor that's for me for me it gave me the hope it gets better and when we saw what happened we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it but when we saw what happened it made me get more excited about next week then yeah. i was hoping i would have this same excitement for next week this week but i didn't i'm gonna be honest i didn't think the premiere was that great i thought this premiere was good but it wasn't great it, but it made me excited for next week because I feel like next week we're going to get what I was hoping for this week. I feel like for me, I just wanted everybody together. I don't like a split premiere. And I honestly I think either. that's my biggest issue is I, I think with the split premiere that we have here and the way that I believe things are going to go down, I do like this as opposed to other split premieres. But I don't love a split premiere. So I was already like going in and I don't, uh, none of my lack of enjoyment of this episode had anything to do honestly with the queens. It had to do with the formatting and the way that they went about the maxi challenge. And I'll just, I'll, I'll say that because I think the queens did the best they possibly could with what they were given in this challenge, which we'll talk about. But I'll be honest, one or two of these queens in this first batch were boring to me. Oh, all right. Period. I'm just gonna say okay. that I'm not even gonna be right a bush about it. Y'all were okay. boring. Some of y'all okay. was boring. I was like, this is it. You're at the Olympics. You're at the high, you're at the high horse. You're ready. Come out guns blazing. Let's see what you gotta do. And hmm, it almost made me feel like that when I saw a, some of the first girls, I was thinking, and this isn't a downside, but uh a lot of times people will make fun of drag entertainers and act like if a drag entertainer has a lot of looks, they have no personality, or if they have a lot of personality, they don't have any looks. And I was thinking with this first group, I was like, so is this the personality group? Because I don't see them really hitting me over the head with the looks. And then when we went through the episode, the personality was kind of bland too. So I was like, oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's cool, one episode. Cool. So I think things will change. But... Right. Yeah. But yeah, I, I will say, I'll put it this way. Shangela said it herself. I think everyone should have the right to do drag. And it's true. Everyone should have the right to do drag. And 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 as Gia Gunn said as well, there is room for everybody. <laughs> and on that note, I think we can get to... David, do you have something that you needed to say, David? I, no, I'm just excited about this cast. I think there's a... They could have balanced it more. I don't mind that it's a split premiere, um, but I think we saw a lot of potential even from the group that we had. So I'm excited for it. That's I all. think. Yeah, I don't hate. Like I said, I I don't. I think the cast is excitement worthy. I just feel like we don't know the full potential of the cast because we don't have the full cast in this episode. So, yeah. and sometimes I feel like from what I've seen, the cast gets better because they have they bounce off of each other. They vibe with each other better. And like, for me, it was Mexico. I was about to say, yeah, case in point for me, Mexico. Mexico Cause I felt like the cast was good, but they started vibing off of each other, which made them more exciting. 
with now with this cast, we don't know the full potential of them because we only got half of them this episode, and then we'll get half of them the next episode. By episode three, I think we'll probably see how they vibe off each other mm-hmm. and get more exciting television for me. That is that is our hope. That's the hope. Yes. That is the hope. That is the hope. Yes. That is the hope. Yes. But so, entrance looks. Yay. And yeah. Entrances. Yes. Now, for context for everyone, we are only going to be talking about the entrances of the group one girls. Um, we are going to save the entrances of the group two girls for next week's episode, just so that gives us a little bit more to talk about in that episode as well. And we want to give those girls, uh, we want to give these girls their due when it comes to this episode. We want to give those girl, the group two girls, their dues in that in the second episode as well. Yeah. So that's our plan for that. One quick thing before we start on the entrance looks: Should we mm-hmm. do a uh, uh, a recap of everyone's draft picks, or should we wait until the end of like maybe the second premiere? Oh, that's gonna be the second premiere. Yeah, okay. so there's no okay. yeah, so there's no draft update in this one. We'll do it at the end of episode two. Oh, you okay. just scared me for a second because <laughs> well, I didn't know this. I was no, thinking we all got like... zero points. This no, and that, and we true. are. You scared me for a whole new different reason. Not but what you said was because Logan had asked me earlier to I send did. him the draft <laughs> of the deal. And I did not do it. Oops. I have not done it yet. And so when you said it, I was like, oh, shoot. I'm supposed to be It's fine. It's fine. It li- oh, draft gosh. update. We are all currently tied for first with zero. Yay. Yay. Logan's in first. Yay. I'll take it. We Yay. love it. <laughs> oh, Lord. My I'll heart take just it. Skipped. Gladly. My heart just skipped for a second. I was like, yeah, you're good. Yeah. Darling, don't worry about yeah. it. Lana, okay. Lana, Logan actually sent me that in the chat and said, Hey, just say this and see what Lana does. <laughs> I did not. I did. Don't you go up in here making up lies and fairy tales, Mrs. The Bunny. I'm like jumping, like, where's my phone? I'm supposed to see no. no, I will expose our entire DM history, which is not that long. I, I, uh, it's not. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. okay, let's talk about these damn entrances. <laughs> we, 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 oh Lord. First up. Naza. 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 Uh, no, we're not now. Naza. David, Naza. let's start with you. Yes. Is everybody else getting a little bit of Jillian Bell from her? Just a little bit. Who is Jillian Bell? No. No, she's an actress. <laughs> there were times where I'm like, who does she remind of? Of who? Jillian Bell. She's an actress. Google her. You probably know her. Just what was she on? Her. Um, I don't even know. Uh, well, let me how do you know her? I just know her. Um, Are you but, saying oh, white people's names now? She... Can you kind of see it a little bit? No. There are times where it happens to me. You just, but you're anyways, just saying the names of Caucasian women. No. Continue. <laughs> I so this this entrance look. Uh, I don't think I don't think her castmates were very high on it. And unfortunately, I'm going to echo that. Um, I don't think this is the best first impression for Naza. We looked at her Instagram. She has some really good looks. This is a bit on the simple side. It's a very, like, this is something I would see at a local bar easily. Um, so I don't know. I, I want to see a little bit more elevation for, for your very first look on the show. But I'm not too mad at it. It's still, it looks good on her. It's a little bit flowy. It's a, a, a nice print. I don't know. I was not I'm, her best. I'm not going to 100% stick up for Naza. I, although I will because I did draft her. But also at the same time, when it comes to her look, and I think the rest of the girls' looks in this first batch of girls, I something is making me think that all of these girls... Let's be honest, because they even, I feel like, alluded to it when they found out that there was no mini challenge, they were going straight into the maxi, maxi challenge. I feel like almost all these girls dressed to be like, okay, we know first challenge is going to be a photo shoot. Let's wear something easy. Yeah, I think I would agree with you. I yeah. really, really, really feel that way, because when I was thinking about all of their looks, I was like, all of their looks seem like it would be something that doesn't have a whole bunch of material, not a whole bunch of bells and whistles or mm. props or stuff that can get in their way or whatever if they would need to do a photo shoot. And then when they initially said... Oh, we're not doing one. That was the commentary from half the girls. Like, wait, no, we're not doing one. I was like, I feel like oh, they may what? have pared it down. I, I think they may have pared some of their looks down in anticipation for that. Because 
the girls have started doing that now. They're like, we need to wear something that's striking and efficient, but also at the same time, something I can get wet in, something that can, if I can get blown off a mountain or something, I'll be okay in it. You know what I mean? If I can Literally, jump in yeah. some balls or something, like, so yeah. I feel like that is part of it. Cause I feel like, like you said, we've seen like Nasa's Instagram has a lot more uh, detailed and nuanced stuff in it. This is very meet and greet. This is very walk around the club uh, after I perform. This is something cute to walk around in because I'm tired and, and now I want to shot and hang out and mingle with people kind of a look. It's very safe, but it's not like if, 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 if they were to tell all those girls, okay, all the run, all the first uh, uh, looks that you walked into the runway with, that's now your first runway look. You have to walk down the runway with it. Every girl would be shitting bricks. Cause I, cause you know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's not what they planned it for. I feel like, I feel like she planned something to be safe cause she thought other crazy crap might be happening. Um, I wish they wouldn't have fully done that. So that way we could see a little bit more personality in their looks and their looks wouldn't look like they were so safe. You know what I mean? But given that that could have been their thought process, I kind of understand more so as to why they would have did it. But I wish we would have gotten more. I agree with you. I wish we would have gotten more. I thought it was so strange we didn't get a mini challenge. I, I was I was a little confused by it, but I mean, they had it to fit in a whole weird. extra six entrances. So I, I guess I understand that. I, I really feel like the format of how they did that was just so very weird to me because I initially thought with them cutting out the mini challenge that it was going to make the episode short enough where they were going to have both of the girls. Yeah. Like both of both of the set of girls gonna come in and both of them were gonna do their challenges and both of them do their runways. And then maybe after yeah. that we would have brought them all together and then do one deliberation, you know, or whatever. But it's almost like the episode was trying to be sh it's like it was trying to be shorter, but only short for like only like 10 minutes short. You know what I mean? Like that's really yeah. when you think about it. And it's like it only cut out like 10 minutes, and that's all we saw from the other girls coming in. So it's like it, yeah. The flow of it was just very weird. Uh, and it's yeah. also, I mean, a, 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 a flow of a show uh, a styling that we've never had with Drag Race. Because usually when we have split premieres, we only see the first girls, then we only see the second girls. And it's no yeah. kind of mixing in between, um, mm -hmm. except for uh, 15. season 15. But that was different. That wasn't really a split premiere. That was all one episode. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. On Nasa's entrance, I will say, I think it's cute. I think it's interesting enough for me. Uh, simple is the word I would use for it, but I don't know. And I'm not saying you mean you meant it in a negative way, David. I don't mean simple in a negative way. I think exactly to what you were saying, Eve. This is a cute little tip around. I think it's good for an entrance because you never know what you're going to be thrown at day one on Drag Race. And in this case, they were thrown nothing. Um, right. But I like I like the puff sleeve. I like the glove. The length of the dress is cute. The wig is cute. Like she looks really good. I I like it. I thought she was cute. She was cute. She um, yeah. It was a. I mean, it wasn't anything super crazy out the ordinary kind of like, wow, whoa moment. But it was like you know what, I'm putting a simple easy dress on that's cute enough that if I do have a photo shoot, it'll. It'll take good pictures because I have this print. I got these puffy sleeves. It'll be, you know, it'll be cute. If it's nothing, then I can still just be, uh, it's still a workable, safe, yeah. pretty entrance look. And so I wasn't mad at, like, uh, the other girls was definitely clowning, talking about how simple it was. I was like, well, I mean, y'all outfits ain't that much better, but that's okay. Um, at least it's simple and cute. This was simple and cute, and I, I kind of liked it. Yeah. Also, as well, true to Drag Race production uh, uh, stylings, y'all were shady as hell for constantly showing us uh, scenes every five seconds of Nazi lifting her dress up, because I can promise you right. that dress honestly did not look like it was that kind of dress that fell down every five damn seconds. I just think y'all found every second that y'all could of her adjusting that thing and kept showing it 80 million times over. And just loop that with everybody else being like, I think her dress doesn't fit. I was like, child, that is just a, like a bandage top thing or whatever. I was like, with all that elastic and stuff in it, that thing is not falling down. It's or not like it's a, you know probably, what I mean? It's not like she's got boobs tape. in or something. Exactly, huh? yeah. It's like there's yeah. probably like double-sided tape if the elastic isn't working. Like... Yeah, it's like it's not like she has like boobs in it or something and it's slipping mm -hmm. down or something. Like It like literally and wasn't you're seeing like some chicken cutlets. It's like, it's not that, but whatever. It, and, it, and it wasn't even like 
it wasn't even like an Ashley Madison type situation on like ground under and you were just seeing nipples or something. It's all the way right. up here, like under her armpits. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, that annoyed me when that happened. I was like, that's such a setup. And I was like, and watch her clear on this episode. I'm like, y'all did all that just to sit up there and discount her. Why do y'all be, do- y'all would love to start the episode off that way. And the girl just got in here. Let us form our own, formulate our own opinions about these girls. You know what I mean? Cause like- speak- Speaking of opinions, scores, David. <laughs> I gave it for for the record, my fifty is average for me. I gave this a fifty nine. Okay. I, I would give this to sixteen. Nice. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Um, I'm gonna give it a solid seventy three, and that's not a negative seventy three. That's a very positive seventy three. I will give it a seventy. Actually, it's good. It's right. good. Diva Moore. Diva Moore. I actually thought this was a cute concept. I, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a fly. It definitely gave me a fly. Yeah. Um, but I like this. And um, there was just something about her, just the way she walked in this and the way she like moved her eyes, dodging back and forth. Like there was something that just kept me like glued on her face. Um, I just think she has like this extra dose of charisma. And it's really screaming out to me so far. Um, sure, it could have it could have been elevated a little bit more than this, uh, but I'm not mad at it. I think at least she went for something kind of different here. So I know not everybody else agrees with me, but I like it. Well, when she walked out for me, I thought two different things. Um, one of them, my little America's Next Top Model training kicked in when I saw her do her little walk. I said, come on, S-Walk, honey. You better uh, serve. She was doing a little serpentine <laughs> walk. That was cute. And then also I was like, uh, Alexa, play Miley Cyrus. I want to hear some, don't you wish that you could be a fly on the wall. <laughs> a creepy little sneaky little fly on the wall. <laughs> All I thought of was the Miley Cyrus song, Fly on the Wall. I was like, is she a fly? Is she a bug? Is she a mosquito? Is that why we have the, the the palm fronds? Are we swatting? What's happening? Um, <laughs> it was um, insectoid couture, but it was ready to wear insectoid couture. I feel like this is like very much something that could have been a runway look or like, a, you know what I mean? Like a very runway ready type look. And this is the more Amazon ready to wear. Like this is available in the Amazon store kind of like, uh, what's that making the cut? with uh, mm-hmm. Heidi Klum and, mm-hmm. uh, and Tim Gunn, like that. It's mm-hmm. like, I see this as being almost like uh, someone took a couture dress and did a more uh, uh, everyday fashion take on it for women to wear at like cocktail parties and stuff, which the downside about that is it does have a hair of simplicity to it. Um, I do feel like that if it didn't have kind of like that, uh, that fabric de- detail in the front, it would be very similar to just kind of a standard little black dress, which isn't a bad thing. Little black dresses aren't a bad thing, but I mean, you're not interviewing for a job. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're not interviewing for a secretary position. Like you're here to win RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, so that's why part of me was living for it, but also part of me was like, you have fly ears on in a little black dress and that's it. Um, Diva Moore has some questionable fashion choices for me this episode. She really only had three. Um, but I questioned two of them. So um, we had hills and valleys here. <laughs> we had hills and valleys. We had hills and ditches. Um, there ain't no valley. She went, there was a ditch, bitch. She was in the ground. Um, I like her gloves. I think the gloves are cunt. I do like the little like cap off part that comes off the shoulder, like that mm-hmm. little part mm-hmm. on the end there. I like that. I love a cunty like arm length love something about it just gives like power and strength so um she gave me a sickening walk in mm-hmm. and it kind of all flew away from there oh no well eve took all my talking points so thanks bitch um no it's okay. don't you wish that you could be a wall. um because my main thing about this was going to be the glove i really enjoy the glove um, I think that's cute. Um, it is simple. I wanted some diva more uh, about this look, but I mean, it's not. It's not bad. That's all I have to say. Fly on a wall. 
Um, I think I'm leaning on the side of David here. I think I was intrigued by her. I was like, okay, she's giving me a concept. She's giving me an idea of something. I don't know what the palm fronds are for, but I'm like, is she swatting stuff? Is that a purse? I don't know what that is, but whatever. I, but I'm like, oh, but I do like the hair. I like the antennas. I like the, the, the detailing on the dress, even though it's, it is a simple black dress. It is a simple, and I think this goes back to what we were talking about with, um, right before the uh, girl right before Naza. Naza, that they were like. Just in case it is a photo shoot, I have this palm proms here. I got this design, I can move in it. It's simple, it's a concept. I still, my face is still there and all of that. But just in case I'm ready for the photo yeah. shoot, but if it's not, it's just an okay, safe, but cute entrance look. So I think this falls into that same category of just in case something happens. I do agree with y'all. The gloves are sickening. I do love the gloves. And I do kind of like the neck piece that she has I going do. on there. I kind of find that very interesting and the way it's sitting right under her chin and goes blends right into her hair. I think that's kind of It really cute. frames her face. I think that's right. why I was so drawn to her face the whole right. time is because it's just like perfectly framed there. What it looks like is like she's wearing a mask type thing around her face. That That's how perfectly yeah. it's framing her face. It's really cute. It's interesting. It's definitely more not safe than like Nas's outfit was on the on the on the very verge of safe. Mm -hmm. This is more on the verge of it could be something, but it's still a little you know it's safe, but it could be. Nas's was just safe. This was safe, but so that's right. that's for me. Scars. I'm gonna give her a nice seventy one. I'm going to give her as well a sixty nine. Nice. nice. <laughs> Nice. I'm going to give yeah. her a 76. I'm going to give her a 74. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And wonderful. Mm -hmm. Next up, Bettina Polaroid. Okay. Um, Bettina Polaroid. I think this kind of gives us a good idea of what her signature type of style is. She likes kind of that retro rocker type of like glam rocker thing. So I'm getting that from this. Um, one thing I like that she does, and I've noticed this pretty consistently, is she's like, eyebrows. Do I need eyebrows? No, I don't need eyebrows. And it actually looks really good on her face. Like, I love eyebrows on drag queens, but something about it with her works. She just doesn't do them. Or if she does do them, they're so light I can't see them. Um, but yeah, I do. I like this look. I don't think it's the most amazing thing, but I think it just it tells us who she is. Um, I'm ready to see more from her, though. Um, I'll start with the good things that I like about Bacina's outfit. Um, I like the fact that it does really showcase who Bacina is as an artist, uh, as an entertainer, and it shows her style. Uh, I feel like we got that 100% the minute right when we saw her, right when we saw it. So I love that. We didn't have to guess what kind of queen she was. She does. She is that 80s rocker, vintage girl. So sickening. Things that I did not like about uh, Bacina's entrance look. Everything else. Um, I think that I cannot stand this bodysuit for the life of me. Um, it looks like the silhouette of two of the most standard bodysuits that any drag queen could ever own in their entire lives that were cut in half and put together to make one bodysuit. And neither of them elevate each other, so it just looks like two basic bodysuits put together to make one basic bodysuit covered in straps. Um, I'm not a fan of the, like... Like, I understand that she's giving, like, this 80s thing. And I feel like that this is a thing that is a downside sometimes is because 80s fashion can sometimes date you. Um, I mean, there isn't a lot of times that a lot of people will do 80s fashion and it makes them look younger. A lot of times people will do 80s fashion and it can end up making them look older. And the thing is, this machine is already older. So it just makes you look old, like you're trying to be young. Like, you're giving me, like, a mom in a Disney Channel original movie that's trying to be cool with her kids. And it's, like, 
I'm like, no, not cool mom vibes. Like, that's very much what I thought when you came through. It was very much like, I'm not a regular queen. I'm a cool queen. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> I don't know if I like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but Gina, I'm not, mm, not the craziest about it. I'm sorry, my dear. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I see exactly where you're coming from, Eve. And I think I honestly will agree. I, I like it more than you do. I will say that. Um, I think for me, I wish it was two different fabrics. Like, I don't need this black and white fabric. And I don't need this black, like, faux leather, vinyl, whatever material it is. If it was two, like, more, like, bright and colorful halves, I think I maybe would have enjoyed it a little bit more with, like, the white um belting whatever whatever that's happening but i just I also feel that, like that it gives me like stock 80s it's like if someone said hey yeah. what are the things about the 80s that you know teeth blonde hair belts mm -hmm. leather uh uh animal print it's like all Black of the all white. of the like yeah. all of the stock 80s things put together in one bodysuit and the thing is, is the bodysuit isn't strong enough to be like that's the most amazing 80s bodysuit i've ever seen it's like that just looks yeah. like a bodysuit someone would have worn in the 80s yeah, no, totally. I, I I wanted there to be a little bit more pop. I do really like her. Mm -hmm. um, and I am a big fan of him out of drag. Hello, hi. I, um, and that's the thing, too. Like, I like their personality. I like yes. their personality. I think that personality is cool. Yeah, I. this wasn't my absolute favorite look, but I don't, I don't fully dislike it. I just wish there were... I, I wish it was brighter. I think that's honestly just the biggest thing I could say about it. Right. I think I'm falling on the side of Eve on this one. I think um, I don't. It's it's just it's nothing that exciting. It's nothing. And see, this is the problem that the only problem that I'm having with Pacina's in this look. It's like going looking through the Instagram that we did, looking through the promo shot that she did looking at this outfit and then looking at the rest of the runway on this out in this episode i feel like she's only going to give us this like i need to see more 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 and i know it's just one episode in and i know we got a lot more to go but i'm nervous that we're not going to get much more from i Patina. see a lot of stock rocker right it's very much rock chic very Glam rock, 80s rock. It's all going to go back to some kind of rock. If it's pop mm -hmm. rock, 80s rock, glam rock, it's always going to go back to rock. And I get if that's your aesthetic and that's what you do. I love that. But then incorporating all of your rock stuff into like the theme that's coming up when they give us your roots or whatever the theme is, your country or your city or whatever the, the theme might be. Are we going to get city rock? Are we going to get my roots, but rocked out. Are we going to get my childhood, but rock? I mean, you know, whatever it is, it's the whole thing going to fall back to rock with Pacina. I need to see more because right now this is just giving me what I typically expected from Pacina going through Instagram, going through seeing her promo pictures. And it's like, this is what I expected. This is what I got. Are we going to get more? Even in the video coming up, we get the same thing. I'm like, are we going to get more? That's what makes me nervous. I'm not closed off from Pacina. I think her vibe is cool. I think her personality is really cool. I enjoy watching her in the episode. But I just want to, I hope, I hope, hope, hope we get more. Because I don't want to sit here every week and be like, oh, here we go with another rock look from Pacina. I need to see more. Because as somebody said, I think. I, I think I, I watched watch I watched the Mexico reunion and I think it was Lolita who said, no, it was Valentina who said this journey on and on this show is about seeing you, the queen evolve. I want to see her evolve. I can't see you be the same queen every week and you make it to the even if you make it to the end of this and we seeing the same look that gets old and that shows you have no growth. We want to see growth in this journey. And so I would love to see that from Pacina. And I hope we do because I don't want to see week after week of rock Pacina. I want to see what else she can do. And I think she has it in her. I just hope we get to see it. Yeah, totally. Of course. Yeah. And I think that the, I think that the, just to throw in real quick, I think that the main thing that, that gets me with it, and it's not about the fact that we have an issue with like her doing rock or anything like that. I think that 
you're talking about there are more nuances than like yes. just the same stock things of what we think of when we think of rock. And I feel like we've just been only seeing the same standard things of what everyone would assume when you when you hear the word rock, what you always see. You know what I mean? And I'm just Leather, like strap, you know, that. Yeah, spine, Grungy. body suit, you know what I body mean? Suit, right. 80s hair, T's hair, and you know what I mean? Asymmetrical stuff, and you know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah, yeah, that's it. And it's just like, we want to see more. Like, if you're going to be rock, go all the way into go it, all the it. Way. Like, that's yeah, I don't yeah. think the entrance look needs to be anything groundbreaking, though. No, no. it doesn't. I but it wanted to, I want it to be something that, that th what she did was show us who she is. And that's what right. I appreciate in the interest mm -hmm. look. You showing us right, who you exactly. are as a queen. But I just hope this is not all we get. And that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yep. This is the first episode. Yep. In episode. this first episode, we see just this. Mm -hmm. The entire episode, we see this. And so I wanted to know if there's more. But we'll see. We'll see what the next episodes bring. Score, sure. um, yeah. I gave this a 65. I will give this as well a 69. Nice. nice. Consistent. I'm gonna match. I'm gonna match David 65. And I'm going to go 60. Come on. Okay, so <laughs> let me say we were we were uh toughest on her out of anybody in our Meet the Queens, except for Eve. Except for um, me. Except for Eve. But for me, this was the clear winner of the entrance looks from this group. I thought this was so cute. We've seen this like cookie and milk concept before on Drag Race. I actually think this is one of the better ones we've seen. Um, in fact, one, my favorite designer made a cookies and milk look for somebody on uh, Drag Race All-Stars this year. And they're my favorite designer. And I didn't love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like this. I think this is cute. I mean, I think maybe something with the hair could have been different to match it better, but I still don't even mind the pink wig. Um, she just looks so cute. Like this is very cute. You can tell she was not overthinking this and planning like, oh, how is this going to be affected by whatever mini challenge we have? She was like, no, I want to have this cool concept. And I even mentioned it in our Instagram um, video that, she likes to do things with food. She likes food looks. So I think we're also kind of getting to know her signature here. So I thought it was super cute. Yeah, uh, definitely my favorite of this first group. And one of my favorites of all 12, to be honest. Miss Mel Mel Sparkles, baby. I am so happy when you walked into the workroom because like David said, you had some naysayers during our cast assessment. Uh, but I, the entire time, was like, no, nope, I see the girl. I see where she's going. I see the concept. I, I see that she's one of those type of queens. Let's just let her get up in there and see what she can do. And the way I was so happy when you walked through the door, because everybody else, when they walked through the door, I was like, OK, 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 OK. You walked in, and I was like, competition has started i was like the girl that's coming for the girl that are coming for the crown are coming in now i live for the concept i will agree with david i am a bit put off over the fact that a very awesome drag race designer did also try to do a milk and cookies look and it did not come off looking as good as this one does this one looks really good um we're not gonna name him we all know who that person is we're not gonna name him now I ain't gonna look. I ain't gonna have him come for me on Twitter <laughs> trying to corner me at Queen. He'd be like, bitch, what you said? I'm like, no, I love you. Um, but I, out of everyone that came through, she was the one that I felt like had the draggiest look. It was the one that didn't seem like it was just something for a regular meet and greet. Like this is a performance outfit. She's gonna do some, she's gonna do some kind of number in this. You know what I mean? Um, or hell, maybe even read the kids in it. You know what I mean? Just like she's going to perform. She's going to give us a show in this look. The other looks, everybody else, would, I feel like, like I said, we're ready to take pictures. She's ready to put on a show. She's ready to get on the stage. Um, I also am not that mad at the pink hair. I would have been okay with it being a different color, but at the same time, I don't know what other color it would have been mm -hmm. that I would have liked because I wouldn't have wanted it to be like black or anything. Um, yeah. And her makeup was actually really, really good too. I loved her makeup. 
I thought her beat was very clean when she came in. It was one of those where I was like, from how this outfit is constructed, I don't know if she made this herself or if it was made for her, but if she did make this herself, I would be very, very excited to see her in design challenges because she, I could easily see her being the one that's going to whip out a gown, like do us some gowns out of, you know, uh, tablecloths or, 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 or sleeping bags or something like that. You know what I mean? That kind of a thing. Um, I love this. And also too, Something that I want to note is that when I was saying at first, the girls, I felt like were dressing a little bit simple because of the fact that they had something like a photo shoot challenge happening and they, you know, wanted to make sure they can move around and stuff. I'm really surprised that there hasn't been that many girls in past Drag Race history that have come in with really extravagant runway looks that convert. I mean, like entrance looks that convert into something else. Um, because also in that same retrospect, I'm like, yeah, you want to come off, you want to come in and you want to show off who you are and make a great impression. But then at the same time, you do want to wear something that's comfortable later on that you can move around in. So sometimes those two don't combine. You know what I mean? Sometimes comfortable isn't striking and striking isn't comfortable. But it's like with this, when I saw this, I was like, now she could probably do a, a, a photo shoot in this because what if she just dropped the skirt part off and it was just a leotard underneath? You know what I mean? Or something like that. And I was just really surprised that that the other girls kind of aired to just doing a completely safe look as opposed to being like, I'm still gonna do something that's cute and striking, but maybe I can take something off just in case I have a photo shoot or something. But I've noticed a lot of girls have never done that either. So I'm just like, we've just been seeing girls in full gowns and updates and stuff just getting dunked in water and stuff. And I'm like, why didn't y'all have change of clothes? It's, it's good. I mean, there's honestly not a whole lot that I can say that David and Eve didn't. Um, what I will say is I, I didn't love the hair. That's the one part of this I don't like. I think, honestly, a hair in that br same brown color would have been perfect. Like, I think that would have been, like, the perfect color to do for something like that. Um, but I don't dislike it by any means of the imagination. It's very well constructed. I went to go look on her Instagram to see if she had posted this look, and she hasn't. She's posted everything else from this episode. So I don't know if she made this. I'm going to assume she probably did because she. I think she makes a lot of what she wears. Um, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, I I have to say, I think this is, outfit was really good. And I think it's good for work uh, entrance look. And if they did do a mini challenge for a, a, a photo shoot, because like this is an outfit that would work well in pictures as well as it is you know, I don't even think she would have dropped the skirt because it's well proportioned. It looks good. And I think for me, if she wore a white, had white hair, the same color as the milk that was pouring down and it was just like, it was just milk just pouring all over her, that her hair was white, the, the cookies, were dunk, it looked like it was dunking in the milk. That would make it a little less distracting than that pink. That but, other than, yeah. but other than that, I thought she looked fantastic she looked amazing this was my favorite work, uh entrance look of that of the night mm -hmm. Score. easily easily um i gave her an 83 i would give her a 95 i loved it mm -hmm. i'm gonna give her an 88 i will match the east 95 easily my favorite mm -hmm. yeah Aquarella. Okay. Go, okay, y'all go hate me because I got some. I got some. Mm. Well, let me start by saying that I am so endeared by Aquarella. She's somebody that was not on my radar much going into this episode, but there's just something so lovable about Aquarella. Um, so I'm rooting for her. I want her to do well, um, especially knowing her story. We'll get into that later. As far as this look goes, um, it's uh, I there's a lot going on here, um, and I'm not really sure what the concept was exactly. Um, it, it, it's it's a bit chaotic, and I don't want to be too negative about her because she's such a sweetheart. But yeah, this was this was my least favorite of the entrance looks. Um, yeah, it's just way too busy, and I don't know what the point of view is. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's do another uh, things I like, things I don't like, good news, bad news. Good news. Um, I think Aquarella is so ridiculously sweet and endearing. 
Um, I would say that I probably fell in love with her personality more so than anybody else who's out of the first group of girls. Um, she just seems very genuine. Um, and I'm always one of those kind of people that's like, protect the babies, protect the genuine people. You know what I mean? Like those, those, those snowflakes that like are special and you know what I mean? Are the ones that are, are going to be these random radical forces of change that just need to be protected at all costs. I feel like she's going to be that kind of person. She just gives that energy. Um, and so I'm interested to see what the rest of our journey is going to be through the competition. Um, mm -hmm. Things that I did not like slash bad news. <clears throat> I want to preface this by saying that this is my personal opinion. Um, and this in no way, shape, or fashion has anything to do with her. Um, and and does it honestly even matter to her? No, because I am me and she is on a TV show. So mm -hmm. I will preface by saying that. Um, but to me, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen walk through the workroom on RuPaul's Drag Race through any season of any franchise. I can't find one redeeming thing about this outfit at all. None of it goes together. None of it. Like, <laughs> what, the, the, the only thing I can even reference thinking about is there was an episode of The Cosby Show a long time ago when Denise stop was making the t-shirt. Stop it, stop it. From a don't designer. You, no, not, <laughs> not Gordon Gartrell. No, Gordon Gartrell. <laughs> not Gordon and Gartrell. Did. He made her the t-shirt. Absolutely and now she not made the t -shirt. Gartrell is. <laughs> and the sleeves weren't the same length. And one of the collars was down here and the other collar was up here. And I was like, that's just all oh. I see with this outfit. It's just like, none of it goes together oh, at Gordon all. And it's Gartrell. not one of those things too where it's, so hodgepodge it works. It just doesn't. It just, oh, it just not does not work. Oh. I, I'm sorry. And the hair, whoa, that is, I'm sorry, but I feel like that that color yellow of hair has to be in somewhat of a styled wig because if it's not, it automatically looks like a Halloween wig out of a bag. And I, it was like, it just, there wasn't a lot redeeming here. That's why I was like, I, your personality is, it shines, but I just, but maybe we, maybe I just personally don't care for this aesthetic that you were giving, and that's just me. You know what I mean? But yeah, I was not a fan. I'm sorry, Logan. Let's start with what I do enjoy, <laughs> which is Aquarello as a human, as an individual. I think. They are a lovely person. I think I think they're lovely. You said lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lana. It's not. It's baby. I, I, there are aspects of this that I really enjoy, but not all together. That's what I will say. It seems like you wanted to do seven different outfits with your entrance and instead of choosing one you did them all i'm serving fashion That's tonight on the was... runway oh my god it's like the episode of friends when uh uh Chan when no one was ready for the party and chandler hid joey's underwear so joey wore all the chandler shirts at the same time lana i'm going to say this first of all I'm very happy that Aquella is on my team and that I get to represent you and you get to represent me this entire season. And I am going to say this. I disagree with all three of these boneheads on this panel because I actually see a lot of things I enjoy on this outfit because I understand where you're coming from. Aquarella is giving us who she said she is. She is a clown queen. She said that. I am a clown queen, and she's giving us clownery. I don't understand why we're acting like this girl did not tell us who she was and is giving us who she was, who she is. She is giving us a clown look. This is what we expect from a clown Queen, she's giving me clown, and I am enjoying the uh, the clownery, the buffoonery, the laughing. I'm laughing with her because I will not laugh at her because I think she's doing what she said she was going to do. 
And no, I'm not just saying this because she's on my team. I actually get her and understand her. And she is giving me what she said she is. She's giving me clown. And I appreciate it. I enjoy the mismatch of each side. Like one side is long, one side is short. Sure, she's giving us Gordon Gartrell. Yeah, she's giving us all of that. But that's what she wants to give us because she is a clown queen and she's in on the joke. I'm on in on the joke with her. So, Aquarella, you did what you said you were going to do, and I am here for it. I don't agree with any of them. You did it, girl. And you're endearing. Not just because you're endearing, and not just because I love your personality, because I get you. Clown up, clown it up, sister. And I'm a I'm I'm a back you up. I'm backing you up. And I don't, I'm not even looking into what's going on in these comments because I refuse, refuse to look into that. But I'm just saying. Yeah. You yeah. clown it up, Aquarella, and I will you have your back. You clown it up, you bitch. And I will have your back the entire way. Period. I will say I have much more positive things to say about her later in our episode. I will Period. say that. Period. So, scores. Yeah, scores. I was literally just about to say uh, my next score is going to be much higher for her. Um, this one for me is a generous 35. I plead. I get that. I have to as well. And I'm sorry, darling. I know. I will never plead for you, Aquarella. Not on this look. I will not. And I'm going to give you a 67. Okay. Because I see you, girl. I see what you're doing. I see you. All right. And last of our entrances, Miranda Lebrow. I like this. I think this is a good pattern for her. Um, it's it's designed very well. It's not the most extravagant thing I've ever seen for an entrance look. Um, but it, it definitely gives her, I don't know, it, she seemed powerful in this, if I'm being honest. There's something just about her that feels like so ready, you know? Like... I'm getting, I don't know. I'm getting potential winner from her. Um, she actually reminds me of two um, movie characters from my childhood. And I'm not sure if anybody will get either. I'm sure you you all probably will. So the first one and the main one, I get Cha-Cha from Greece. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll know Cha-Cha. She's mm -hmm. the one that dances. And she has like such, like I always think of Cha-Cha. And I think of like a fierce, strong, powerful woman. And that's what I'm getting from her. And I'm also getting somebody that's a little more scary from my childhood. And her name is Mumbi. She's from Return to Oz. Um, she was the villain in that movie. And there's just something like just so intense about Mumbi's face. And I'm getting that same uh, thing from Miranda here. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, I don't know. There's just she's just so striking to me. And I like this look. I think the colors go well together. Um, probably my second favorite of the entrance looks. Um, I will agree. Uh, I think that it would probably be my second favorite out of all the entrance looks as well, too. Um, but I will also say that there is a hair of not really simplicity to it. Um, but I guess I would say simplicity when it comes to the design. Um, just because it's kind of like jumpsuit with a little mini skirt. Um, but then everything is, of course, made all out of the same fabric. It seems like something that she could have easily made. And maybe she's made this outfit before with different fabrics or different colors. You know what I mean? So she was like, well, let me do it just with all with a matching print, which I love a good print on print on print. So that I do live for about the aesthetic. I, I love it even all the way over to the head wrap. All of that is all the same print. I live for all of that. Um, but is it completely 350% wowing me? No, but it is a very good look. Um, one very, very small nitpick is I wish the shoes were green. That's the only thing. Uh, because I noticed the shoes are yellow, but it looks mm -hmm. like all of the, uh, the all of the lining on the outfit is like more of a lime green. Mm -hmm. If the shoes match that, it would have been perfect. Yeah. There's um, yellow in the pattern, so I think that's why. That's where they was pulling it from? The, pa the pattern is blue, yellow, and green. 
And see, the downside about that is for some reason it reads like it's mostly yellow and purple. Yeah, yeah. I was getting that too. Mm-hmm. It and almost looks like a Monet paint. The way that, I wonder if that's just the way that the colors mix when your eye sees them. It just registers that way. And so I, I feel I, like that it it makes that yellow shoe that much more yeah. brighter than the rest of the outfit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I, I wanted to look at it specifically because I love a print on print on print. This is one of my favorite things that queens do. Um, and I wanted to look at that print because it it reminded me of an impressionist painting, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite eras of art. So like for me, this this locked in for me in all of the bases. I was just like, yes, I love this. It's everything I love about an entrance look too. Like it's giving me a statement. I I can tell what kind of queen she is. It was a powerful entrance. It was something she could have done a photo shoot in very easily. They could have dunked her in water. They could have blown a, a fan in her face and it, she would have been fine. So for me, this takes String her up like a pinata. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. for me, for me, this was actually my favorite entrance um, with Melu just behind it um but yeah i do wish that the lining and the shoe matched that is going to be my one i agree with you eve i wish either the lining and the shoe were both green or they were both yellow yeah but that's really my only nitpick otherwise and i love this up do up do with the wrap i love it work miranda i'm pretty sure i drafted you and i'm very happy about it i don't remember (laughs) um yeah Yes, because I, I was mad about it. <laughs> I I do think I she gave a very powerful entrance, and it's it's a, a version of a power suit, and I'm digging it. Um, you can't go wrong when you got a power suit and you walk into a room; people just automatically got to pay attention to you. And even with the sc- scarf head wrap do thing, it kind of just like it shows that she's sophisticated in class and like elegance and like that's I think that's what she wants to portray as her drag is she's a sophisticated queen she she knows what she wants she she's very powerful and she's gonna let you know how powerful she is so you just put some respect on her name when she walk into that room and I I love it it's it's, it's, it's a great look I agree with the shoe but other than that great scores I gave her a 79. Um, I will give her an 85. I feel like that her and uh, Melusine were the um, the two ones out of everyone that came in with the strongest like entrance looks or the, or the, or the looks that I feel like would be the most, this is my first time walking under RuPaul's Drag Race type looks. You know what I mean? So yeah, 85, I would say. I'm going to give her a 90. I will give her a 87. Yep, 87. Work. Well, now that we're finally through our entrance, <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about Greg Queen. Greg Queen, who's kind of cute out of drag. Very. Very, Very cute. cute out of I'm gonna be honest. I really enjoyed Greg, and I and, mm-hmm. and I. I'm gonna be real honest here. She was not my favorite on Queen of the Universe. Oh, she was mine. She was she not was my, my favorite. favorite. She wasn't my winner pick quite personally, but I do think she's very talented and deserved her win. What I will say, I love I the one episode we have so far. I'm really enjoying her as a host. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it it definitely was aided by the fact that this first challenge is a singing challenge, mm-hmm. <laughs> and what mm-hmm. she does is sing. So I think I think all of that kind of aided everything. I'm very interested to see when it comes to her judging like a comedy challenge. Like I'm very interested to see what the dynamic is going to be there and how she's going to host uh, moving forward this season. But I was very impressed so far it was also very strange to not have two hosts on this stage because it's the same it's the same studio as uh mexico and we will soon see as well as germany i'm just glad it's decorated a little bit different so i I agree yeah it stands out 
But yeah, I what I realized while watching this was so Greg is 28 now. She was 27 when this filmed. So I'm yeah. pretty sure that's the youngest uh host we've ever had. I I can't remember how old Pangina was when Thailand was filmed, but I don't I think don't she was that young. No. How, how young um, is Valentina's not that old, is she? She's she's 30. in her 30s. She, well, she oh, was she born is. in 1993. So I'm assuming she's she was either 29 or 30 when it was filmed. I think Nikki um, might be younger. No, Nikki's 29. Nine? I I, yeah, I've, I I looked this all up. Or no, actually, Nikki, I think, is early 30s. 30. Um, but what I think I'm noticing is. This comes up kind of when they're doing their uh, recordings. I just noticed with with Greg that she seemed to have like this genuine care for mm. the other queens. Like you could tell that she was really rooting for them, hoping for their success, not giving them just straight up judgment like we get some from some other hosts. And I'm honestly starting to think that there's something about these younger hosts where they see the contestants more as peers. They don't look down on them. They don't think that they're better than them because they're a host. And I think it's really refreshing. So I'm really liking Greg. I think I think she could end up being one of my favorite hosts after all is said and done. We say that now. <laughs> I, do. I, mean, I, always say that. I only say we say that now because I feel like we say that sometimes about certain hosts. We're like, the, oh, we feel that way about my mom pal. Oh, we feel this way about, about this person. And next thing you know, they end up sitting at home with our favorites. And we end up with some screw up lineup like the end of Espana. And we're just like, forget them. <laughs> They're horrible. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say that about one of the other judges here later on in our program today, but not about Ooh. Greg yet. I mean, two things could be true because we could say Greg is a great host. But then turn around and be like, but we disagree with everything you right. just said about this episode <laughs> and about these queens. So sure. I think you're great, but I think your decision making is a little off. So a little sus, sus. Both, right, both could be true. And it's her first time, we have to remember as well. This is her true. first time doing anything like this, from what we understand. So and, and it's a lot of pressure on Greg because this is their Brazil's first ever drag race, as she mentioned a lot in the episode. And so yeah. she really has to make sure it goes really well so they can be renewed and so people can have respect for the yeah. dr drag scene in Brazil. In Brazil. And yeah, so yeah. this is a lot of pressure on her and then on these yeah. queens to actually produce a really good show and show yeah. a, have a good showing. So like I, I felt the same way, same thing about Mexico since this was their first season as well. They mm -hmm. really had to do so much to make this show great so people could number one put respect on the drag scene in mexico and in brazil and then so they can get renewed again because they want to not just be a one season show well and so they right. are re they are renewed through season three see which we is have, great we have confirmation of that that paramount plus paramount plus has renewed um i believe mexico germany uh italia and brazil Good. through their through the next three seasons that they do so well we know for wanna... sure as long as as long as the paramount as long as paramount plus is producing these shows we will have three seasons of brazil after well, that who knows exactly what happen, and that's what they want to make sure too that after three that they won't be like okay yeah. well, here's your three now you're done yeah because we got other other drag races seasons who've been going on for 15 seasons it, you know exactly. it's a lot so they want to get that too so yeah, yeah. and they yeah, don't want to like thailand town because thailand was great but they didn't get known past the season three Ooh. exactly um, I think it's interesting, too, because the Brazilian fans have been some of the most vocal for the longest time about wanting a Drag Race franchise and, quite frankly, deserving a Drag Race franchise. And I think I'm, I'm happy that we're finally getting it for them. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing to consider with Greg as a host is we have to remember she didn't compete on Drag Race. Mm -hmm. And that's the big difference I'm already seeing between her hosting and someone like Nikki or someone like Brooklyn or someone like Valentina and Lolita who just did it for the first time. It's like, she didn't compete on Drag Race. She's competed, but it's a very different dynamic with her having competed on Queen of the Universe um, and not on Drag Race. Right, right. So I think that's gonna be something to look at and consider when we talk about her hosting throughout this season. And I'm, I'm just excited to see what she does. Same. But, Same. Yeah, so we get no mini challenge. They're like, no. nope, we're not doing a mini challenge. We're going to be different throughout this whole premiere. And we're just going to go straight into the maxi challenge because y'all are making a music video. 
living in Brasilia. Gag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and the girls were gagged. They're like, what? And not I only told, they said, I told the, I'll, I'll say. I'm sorry. They said, not only are you doing the music video, you got to write your verse, choreograph your own verse, and we come up with this concept. Y'all doing all that. We just go film it and you go. And they like, wait, what? No choreographer? Nope. You got it. No, nothing. You do it and we'll, we'll make it work. I was like, those girls was yeah. gagged. Yeah, I told the crew when it happened because when it when the episode dropped, me and Logan were the first two to watch it. So we watched like right when it came out. And I was like hinting to them. I was trying to hint to them as to what the Maxi Challenge was without fully telling them what it was because I knew all of them weren't watching it. But I was like, the caliber of what they're doing for their first Maxi Challenge is what they're usually been doing for their final challenge in like yeah. At least the first four to five freaking like that's usually what it was. It was there's some RuPaul's Drag Race song that she's about to remix. She's gonna be in the music video. You're gonna be in it with her. You need to come up with your own lyrics. You need to record them. You need to come up with your own choreography that has all of y'all in it. And then you also need to come up with mini choreography where it's just gonna be a cut scene between with, with just you and Ru. Like the whole uh what about me, what about Juju B thing in season two with Ru slapping all of them and stuff. You know what I mean? Or like um Bianca season where it had all of them doing the remix to uh um Sissy that it? walk Sissy that walk yeah like it's like that's been the standard for like all of the past seasons so for them to do that on their first time there I was like whoa but then it's weird because when you see the video I'm like maybe they should have brought in a choreographer something child maybe they should have waited again, again, to once see. again once again as the great as the great jim gun once said was there no budget this time around i was like what i was like what is going on with this video i feel like y'all put a, a a chain fence on a graffiti wall with some broke down vehicles in the front and then y'all it was it was very it was very hodgepodgey and i was yeah. just kind of like yeah maybe they should have i guess i think I, I was like, y'all should have just y'all should just kept this for a finale challenge. I was about to say maybe they should have waited for later in the season, season, you yeah. know, the last. Uh... Yeah, and also too, just to throw this out there, because usually they'll they'll try to have them do some kind of singing challenge or something like that within the first couple of episodes. I wonder if this may end up replacing like a girl group challenge. I wonder if we like won't get a girl group challenge or something because we got this. I kind of want a girl group challenge. I hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, the bulk of the episode is them just doing, making their stuff, choreographing their stuff, doing their thing. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't yeah. really have anything to talk about when it comes to any of that stuff. So, well, I had a few things. So it seemed, it seemed to me that it kind of like almost people were pairing off based on age like Naza and, and Melazina uh they seem to know each other so they are hanging out and then uh a lot of the older queens know each other so they're hanging out and there was one part where I was so confused because um Diva was talking I think to Aquarella in the background and then um Melazina was in the front table and then she just yells at her for like why are you talking stop talking and I'm like, yikes! Is that how we're going already? I couldn't tell if they were joking or she not. She was like, "Yeah, I need like I need my space to like come up with my lyrics." And I'm like, "Girl, you think you're gonna have personal space on Drag Race?" <laughs> like, and it wasn't like they were yelling. Like, Diva was just having a normal like conversation at a normal like tone of voice. I thought, yeah, I I thought that was weird. I felt like it was to me. It looked like somebody like Ms. Melu was trying to make a moment and it just didn't come off right. Like, yeah. like she tried to create this moment of I want to be the villain of the season or I want to be sassy of the season and it didn't, it just fell very flat. It was like, girl that ain't even like sassy in a petty good way. That was just weird, strange kind of way like are you okay? Like that was when it came off. Like, are you okay, girl? You, you did you not take your medicine today? Cause you just yelling out stuff that don't make no sense at all. 
it to me was like it reminded me of an episode of Dracula when nothing honestly happens in between the like the when they find out the challenge in the runway. So like they try to make up something to happen. I was like, are we like I was like, this is weird. I was like, this seems produced. Like the producer that's, said, y'all y'all that's suspicious. Right that's weird. Weird. Yeah. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. It we was very, that well, it was, it was <laughs> very much like suspicious. It's, it's weird. Don't like what? Why? Why? Why are we doing this? Like it just seemed very forced and not yeah. like it's not in the way. Her, they her, uh, when you ain't gonna get no. They told her when you ain't gonna get no uh, quietness until you get back to the hotel or something. I was like, well, true. Right. <laughs> that girl was like, uh, it, it, you know how when somebody just yells something random out and you look at them like, are you okay? That's what everybody was looking at her like. She was like, "I'm, <laughs> I'm talking. I need to, like baby girl." They were like, they were like. So anyway, anyway, Chad, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> girl, bye. Like it, it was crazy. But then we had the moment where uh, I think it was was it not? Well, so- next we go into the recording session. Um, yeah, which I, that's where I really started to see Greg was just being so patient with everybody and just so kind throughout. Because if I'm being honest, almost everybody was rough in the recording part. Like, sure, we might not have the best things to say about how it turned out, but I I was very worried for it based on how the recordings went. So I think they might have some great producers down in Brazil that made everybody sound great. Or yeah. <laughs> comparatively, especially Bettina. I was like, oh, she sounded rough during that recording session. And she's um, supposed to be the rock girl. I know. It oh. was. You should have been on that mug like, oh, or something. It, I just, I, it was, it was definitely rough. I did enjoy Greg being like, maybe you should do this, and maybe you should use your tone up here, like while we singing down here the whole time. Like, bring it up. Give us some, some range. Some like you're a performer. Let loose. Let it go. Be free. Da da da. And she's just like. Uh, it, 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 it's so patience and I love that you know what it made me think of though it made me think of I cannot remember what season it was I think it might have been season 3 of Canada's Drag Race um, it was some season of Drag Race I think it was either Canada's Drag Race or US Drag Race um, and they had this uh, black actor or like director there when they did one of the um one of the uh acting scenes and she was just giving them the most amazing feedback when they came to just like critic like crit- like like just being constructive about how they needed to play their scenes actually no way i take it back it was um it was all winners all stars when they did the uh the uh, christmas acting challenge yeah 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 it was that lady that they had there that was like giving everybody just like everybody. She was like, "I love your energy. I love how you're coming from here. Maybe you should come with this. So maybe you should come the with best this." I was director like, they've ever had. Yes, yes. I was like, "Oh my god, this makes it so much better than the times where they have Rue or Michelle directing it because they're just giving you ideas or advice that they think would make the scene look better. They're not coming from a like we're actual directors that have directed shit kind of a uh, aspect to like." technically let you know these are some things you can kind of work on to achieve getting to those places and so that's what i liked about drag uh greg's approach to critiquing them is it wasn't just so much oh well you're a little pitchy oh try and do it this, da, 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 da. she was actually like no i'm going to technically try to teach you how to get to where you want to be at you know what i mean and, and i feel like they, they just had that just i guess uh, uh says more when it comes to some of the people that they have judging or, or or being the uh, assistant for those people, a lot of times I feel like that it helps them out so much better when you have someone that knows what the hell they're talking about doing it. Because there'll be a lot of times where it'll be like, this is gonna be choreographed by Todrick Hall. Child, Todrick Hall ass can't dance. Why, why, why are we doing this? You know what I mean? But like, give it to somebody like Jamal Sims who can actually be like, oh, I see what you're doing with this. Let me help you with this so that you can get this dance move right. You know what I mean? Like it just, there's something to be said about when they end up putting people in those teaching positions that are actually in teach. that field. It just mm-hmm. makes the end product look so much better. Yeah, and you I have like to know how to teach. Lot better. I feel like it was the best mm-hmm. this way as opposed to if Greg would have had, like, I don't know, maybe the producer who wrote the song 
or, or, or make the music or whatever be their vocal coach because it possibly wouldn't have came off the same way, you know? Yeah. I feel but like the producer mean, didn't say a damn word. A uh, damn thing. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have to. He didn't have to. No. Greg <laughs> had it. Greg had it. But like I agree, you need somebody who, who understands what they're doing and knows what they're doing in that field to actually teach people. Because in those moments they need to be taught because they don't know. They haven't been in the studio. They don't understand. And it's like it made sense when we did the uh the, the girls from Fourth Impact what they brought to that recording because they I, know what they're doing. And, it's, and like, like you said, when you have Rue and Michelle giving ideas about what they think will look good in the acting challenge, it's different from somebody who actually, not saying that they don't know what they're doing, but it's different from somebody who actually works and lives and breathes this field and has an eye or an ear for those types of things. And so it definitely made sense and it definitely made it better because yeah, I was nervous for all of them. Every single one of them. There was not one of them that went in there. I was like, oh, they did really good. All of them struggled mm -hmm. in that rehearsal. Yeah. And Greg was very patient and was bringing things out of them that made sense. But I was like, oh, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. Thankfully, the producer, he did know how to do his job because he knew how to work that auto tune very well. <laughs> he knew how to do his job because maybe once we got the final product, I was like, all oh, this actually makes sense. It actually sounds good. It sounds decent. And yeah, the notes that Greg gave actually really helped some of them out a lot, a lot. And I yeah. loved, I loved the first question out of Greg's mouth. So what's your experience with music and singing? Period. Just so you need to know. Get, exactly. Just so she can get the baseline. It's like, okay, this girl can sing. We're going to focus, uh, we're going to focus my notes on, you know, pitch and like stuff like that. Oh, this girl can't sing. Let's just make sure she can, she can put a beat together that fits what the song is going for. Right. Like, so I, I love, I, I, is this, this is what's making me very excited about Greg. And I, I think, like I said earlier, this first challenge, the first, well, the first two technically, because we're going to get the same thing next week. But I think this first, the music video is a really great way to have Greg start as a host and coach and mentor, because this is right in her wheelhouse. If they threw her in with a design challenge, I don't know what kind of critique she would be able to give yet. And I did to see that. And this makes me very excited for what Greg is going to do as the mentor and the host and everything like that. Yeah, This was good for Greg. I don't know how good it was for the girls. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for next week's girl group. Let's just yes. say that. Yeah. I'm excited for next week's video for sure. But yeah. Then we go into Mezzaline and her choreography because they had to come up with their own choreography and um, they she, did they Mel did they use the choreo has anyone <laughs> ever seen the movie the bird cage <laughs> i sure have of course melody was uh melody. Ron Williams because maybe they said melody go up there and do some choreo she said a five six seven and then did like 50 minutes of stuff and then afterwards they said Okay, we don't get it. Teach all of that to us again. I said, oh, she don't know what the hell she did. <laughs> right, baby. I'm I know. Like, I was like, she's making this up as she goes, but it was I, good. I love it. It looked it was, good. It was very birdcage. Oh, I need to go watch <laughs> I mean, that movie again. I mean, I, 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 I didn't get the birdcage. My reference point went back to the Steve Harvey show when it was said to entertain. It was like, and Whitney, and Whitney, and Britney, <laughs> and Britney, and. Britney, and <laughs> And mother said, What? <laughs> and then said, What? Oh, oh no, God. you did. Oh no, you did. Like, that's what I was like. I love that. Miss Lee, uh, Miss Sparkle. I'm going to tell you Miss Sparkle. Miss Sparkle. Miss Sparkle. Sparkle was like, and popping, popping, seven and eight, and da da, and did 18,000 counts and said, Y'all got it. I was like, <laughs> And they were like, no. Y'all doing it? We're going to no. need to do that Packing. again. Packing. <laughs> Packing. And and no, girl. No, we don't. No, we don't got it, girl. We ain't got it. She didn't even want to be. She, they elected her. So yeah. she's like, Fine. If I'm being forced into this. Let's go. And, and just went for it. <laughs> it was, I was like, and then when, it, when we watched the video, I was like, 
not a drop of choreography in they this whole use, dang video. They did not use it. Why? Okay. Why they are we doing walk, group? Pop, pop. Why are we doing group choreo when a music video is going to be filmed individually and you're never going to see really? the six girls in the I same? Was, like, never crazy. Happened. They were never together, were they? Never they were together. never together. Okay. They never. shot never. each and every girl individually and said, "This is everybody's best moment, you know, and we're going to you know shot it all together and make it work." Shit. You know Just why? Laying on shit. It was very much like it was. I'm gonna why, tell you Lana? why. I'm gonna tell you why they didn't have can no group talk, shot. Talk, uh, Hold on, let me talk about. Are we gonna talk about the video yet? We, we, not, we, not yet. We, we, okay. I'm gonna tell you why they ain't had no group shots in that video. Cause none of them girls could dance. None of them was picking up no choreography. None of them had no rhythm or movement and nothing. Like it was. It would have. They probably shot a group moment. And then and they, they look at that thing and say, absolutely the not. Director's cut. Absolutely. It's on the ground floor. They cut that out and threw it in the trash and buried yes, it would, and burned it alive. They were like, nobody they would not look cohesive no. with their different outfits. Absolutely <laughs> they, not. They picked mm. they picked one person from six different 80s bands and put them all together in one band. Yep. 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 And it was not. We, it was I, just have, I have a whole I have a whole moment where we can talk about the actual video but, later. <laughs> so but, don't okay. worry. But after that, we'll move because Ooh, yep. Um, then we go back to the workroom and we have what what I love to call the Emmy moment of the se- of the of the episode. And this where Miss Aquarella just took everybody's heart and put it in a blender and made us all cry because Aquarella was talking about how she has a disability in her eyes, she can't really see, and she has glasses. And somebody asked her, does she think the glasses will get in her way of drag? Is it going to you know, be a hindrance to her in this competition. And she kind of was just like, I thought about it, but I can't really do anything about it. Like, it really, she's like, I, I need my glasses. Contacts. You can't wear contacts. And you know what? Again, I know these things. I couldn't wear contacts for most of my life until just recently. So I understood that. I was like, oh, it makes sense. And she was like, I just can't wear contacts, so I have to wear glasses. But I'm like, I can't let that define me or stop me from doing what I love to do. And then she talked about how right before, it was right before the competition, her glasses broke. And she was like, glasses are expensive? I don't know if it's the time. Yeah, she she was talking about that in her confessional. How And she's just sobbing, telling the story. She's talking about how she she broke her glasses once and she couldn't afford any new glasses. And so they were two thousand dollars. Yeah. I was like, what? I, I mean, I don't know what that converts to with our currency. I know, that's but, but still, that sounds like a lot. Even but yeah, conversion. She, had have, she had to have her fans. Uh, they <laughs> chipped in and helped her get some. Which this actually hit really close to home for me because um, my my mom actually texted me this week and she's like, my glasses are so scratched up. I cannot see when I'm driving and I can't afford new glasses. So she needs to borrow some money for me. But I, then I watched this like the next day and I'm like, Oh, it touched yeah. me because of Aquarello, but it also reminded me of uh, my mom having the issue with her glasses, which she went and got some new ones. So she's all good. We love that. I mean, it's it's hard to ask for help. And I know in any situation, it's hard for anybody to have to ask for help for something that you need. I mean, I've had to ask for help for some things that I need. And I'm like, oh, I hate doing it. I hate asking people for some money for things like groceries or things like glasses or things like rent or things that I should be able to take care of. But at this moment, I can't. And so I can understand how hard that is for people. And for, so for her to be like, I had to do that for some glasses that cost me $2,000. And uh, I, I had to go on the internet and ask fans and friends to do that. And she's sobbing like, oh, I'm like, I understand. I get it. It's hard. It's hard to say I don't have it. Yeah. It's hard to say I don't have it when you know you should have it or you're doing everything to get it and you just fall short. Of not getting it, so I in that moment I was like, oh, oh, I hope the best for you. I don't know how long you're gonna be in this competition, but I just want the best for you. And I was like, send me your GoFundMe, girl. I'll, I can send you ten dollars at least. I know. I was just, <laughs> oh, I, was just so, I just was all in my feelings about that. But, but as somebody who has vision issues and understood mm-hmm. that, I'm, I'm like, oh, all in my feelings. All in my feelings. 
Oh, but we moved because after that, they was like, all right, Emmy moment over. Doom, doom. Literally. <laughs> I was like, all right, then. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Jury panel for this situation. We got Greg. Um, we got Bruna Begnick. Braga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Greg looks sickening, bitch. Mm -hmm. uh, I want a bigger got, hair. I just want a bigger hair for Greg. That's all. Who is these other folks? Betty Who and Big well, Ends and uh Big Ange. I was gonna eyes. say that. <laughs> Betty Who, Big Ange, and Jonathan Van Ness with the judges. Okay. I I I only know Big Ange, but okay. That's She's the only person. Really I know who Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like Big Ange is so David, please don't play with my intelligence today on this podcast. Please don't do that today. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Oh well, my god. I, I want to talk about our guest judge because mm -hmm. I was thrilled. And this is going to be a very niche reference okay. that I feel like only people that are very, very deep in the drag race universe are going to get. But our guest judge was Gretchen, who is one of the most famous Brazilian singers. Mm -hmm. But I know Gretchen <laughs> from something completely different. Um, I know her from a Drag Race parody account on YouTube called Moonies, who has done, who used to do a lot more um, reviews, uh, like parodies of like the older seasons of Drag Race, and specifically season nine of Drag Race. And every time that this person would reference Trinity the Tuck in their videos, they would instead cut to Gretchen. <laughs> and it would be this, it would be just a clip of Gretchen and the, the audio was always, El Grecho Contura, every time. Because she does kind of look like Trinity a little bit. I can kind of see it. And I think the reason why, I, I, I believe this person is Brazilian, so I believe that's why they made that reference. Mm. But when I saw that Gretchen was going to be the guest judge, I was like, Eu Grecho Contura! I got so excited. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I know who she is. <laughs> I was thrilled. And she was a delight. A truly a delight. She didn't say much, but I was like, yes, Gretchen, you work, yes. you work, girl. Come on, Big Ange. Oh my God. <laughs> and then our other two members of the permanent judging panel, we have Bruna Braga on the far left, who I'm loving. Me one too. episode. Who's my favorite? She was, cool. she was my favorite because then you compare her to um, the other queer person on that far right, uh, Dudu, Dudu Bertolini, and their name is quite literally Dudu, uh, and their opinions were Dudu. Oh, well. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <clears throat> And on that note, <laughs> I said what I said, mm. and we're going to move to the runway. <laughs> Category is my roots. My roots. I'm not going to try. I'm learning Portuguese right now. I'm not going to try to say the words. I'm, just, I'm not even going to bother. My roots. It's inspired yeah. by Thanks. your hometown or the town you started dragging. We are judging this off of the look and not the reference. Let's make that very clear while we dive in. <laughs> because yes. I I will speak for just myself. I don't know a lot of these references to the specific things in these cities. Same. So I'm just going to judge the look on how nice it is. And I will say this. If you know the references, our comment section is always oh, please open. Please let us know. Please let us know. <laughs> and then we will adjust accordingly. Yes. Period. So, first up is Melazine. No. Who's starting? You are. You, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I gave I gave Melazina her flowers earlier for her entrance look, which I thought was wonderful. I loved it. Um, so the judge, one of the judges said that they thought this was a dog when it came out. I thought it was a horse 
even up until they said that. Like, then I finally realized it was a capybara, which I love those things. They are every animal's favorite animal. They get their best friends with every animal. There is birds, crocodiles, whatever. They are We're the Sasha such... Colby of the animal kingdom. <laughs> yes, which clearly Melzina is not based on how she snapped at Diva. <laughs> but um, I did not love this. I felt like it was very costumey. It looked... I don't know. It just did not give me drag race. Like, this is not what I expect to see on the stage. Sure, she did do the face reveal and show that she had her makeup, which was kind of smudged around. But overall, I was like, no, this is not This is not what I want. Like, she set the bar so high for herself, and it was a huge drop down for this. Um, and I don't feel bad about saying that this time because it just did not work for me. The only thing I thought was kind of cute was when they left the stage later on and she, like, pulled down part of her panties and mooned uh the, the judges but yeah this this was a this was a big miss for me lana you go ahead we'll go we'll go this direction this time let's okay. go counterclockwise okay. i agree with david 100 percent. this was the biggest miss on the runway I was like, absolutely not. I don't care what it is. What we're not going to do is walk down this this drag race stage in a, whatever this is. Because this was, I mean, you ain't even put no good fabric on top of the horse, cow, dog, cantalina, whatever. You Cap ain't, Cap whatever. You ain't even put nothing cute over it. You put this, sim ugh. Absolutely not. This was the biggest miss I've ever seen on any drag race I've ever watched since I started watching. This was the worst outfit to walk the stage for me. I can't even know. Don't like it. I was harsh on you in the cast assessment. I praised you in the Instagram. I praised you even on your entrance look. And we are back to square one right now. I can't with this. Here's what I'm going to say. The reason I didn't go as far as Eve did with Miss Aquarella with the entrance looks is because this existed in this episode. Um, for me, no. Eve, you go right ahead, darling. Um, I don't think this was as bad as Aquarella's, but it wasn't great. Um, it, it gave me, at first I didn't fully get what it was. I honestly, I, I kind of got like a real quick Eeyore in a, in a bra and panty reference from like all stars with Heidi in closet. When she first came mm -hmm. out, I was like, is she a donkey? Um, and then when she had the, like copy bar face on or whatever, I was like, okay, cute. So are we getting an outfit or is she going to take it off or we get some kind of reveal? Right. And then we just I was waiting for a everything. big reveal. Right. I think that's what we're waiting for. And so when the mask came off and everything, the only thing it made me think of is like, that's like drag queens in the summer. Like that's, that's all it looked like was a drag queen sweating in the summer with her lashes on her cheek and the makeup is running. And that's, but other than that, I don't get like, do the drag queens wear um, capybara costumes in your home city? Uh, is this like you're a mascot for a team of some people? Uh, uh, I don't know, like the Casablanca capybaras? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't the craziest about it. I would have preferred it um, with you coming out with the mask off and then like, somehow you pulling the mask out from somewhere and putting it on and us being like, oh, you're an animal or something. Like, I don't know. It's just like the the payoff was not a big payoff. And so it it took a very simple costume and just kept it at one level. And it never really peaked. Yeah. Scores. I'm going to, I'm so sorry. I'm giving this a 26. I am pleading for sure. Make that two. Melissa, I'd give you a 30, girl. <clears throat> Next is, oh no, 
Miranda. Bettina. Bettina. I'm learning who everyone is. Bettina Power. Bettina Palarine. Yeah, um, I like this. I actually, I'm glad that this photo actually shows us what the background on the cape looks like mm -hmm. because I don't think we You're got welcome. a lot of that. Yes, good job. Um, I I don't think we got a lot of that on the runway because she wasn't spread out like that most of the time. Uh, but now I see like this is probably what the place she comes from looks like, and it's actually very pretty. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I, I don't hate this. I don't hate this. I'm not super excited by it, um, but I, I I love her face. Like, something about her face just really works for me. Um, I don't know. It could have been a little more cohesive. It feels like the cape and the actual outfit don't super mix well. I don't know. Maybe if you're going to have such a colorful cape, why not have, have some color on your bodysuit as well? Uh, but... But yeah, I really don't hate it. So it, it was good. It just wasn't great for me. I, I kind of, I love the cape. Don't get me wrong. This cape is stunning. It's beautiful. I think they mentioned that she was from Impanina. If that's, or it, given oh, them Impanina. The girl, the girl from Impanina, which makes the swimsuit make sense to me. The girl from Impanina on the beach, da da da, da. That makes mm -hmm. sense for me. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the case. I love, I think sure could have had more color but then Bachina is giving us Bachina. it wouldn't be Bachina if she had all that color in that like she's giving us swim rock she's giving us swim wheel rock like seriously look at the leather sleeves on this swimsuit and then the chain across and I'm like again this is what I said I know you're giving uh you're showing us who you are as an artist I hope we get to see more because now we're getting swim rock. We're getting a, you know, a rocker chic, you know, swim in a swimsuit, but still giving us hints of rock with the, the sleeves, but giving us sophistication in class with the hat and her makeup and the hair. It's, it's all very mish, mosh, mosh, you know, hodgepodge, but it's not horrible hodgepodge. It's like, Okay, I see who you are. You're giving us who your sit, what your roots are in this cape, but you're still giving us who you want to be shown as as a queen. So I'm not hating it, but I I do hope we get more. I'm still go be in hopes and praying that we get more by episode three when next time we see her. I I don't love it. I think there's. Uh, there's a way to pull off this, I'm going to wear a simple outfit and then reveal a giant cape of my hometown. And I honestly don't think any of the iterations of seeing it on Drag Race have been that good. Honestly. And I need um, a sun anus. Absolutely not. That is the last thing I would like to discuss currently. Um, yeah, I. here's what I will say. I love the wig. And I think the makeup is really good. And I like the hat. So clavicle up, I'm really enjoying what's happening here in this ensemble. Um, however, comma, I just, I don't, it's not bad. It's not bad. But I don't love it. But mm. she looks good in it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, uh, Eve, go ahead. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Now we get to part two of Eve bashing with Chena. Um, I don't like this. I don't. I feel like that, like you said, Logan, I've seen other iterations of girls do the little like back reveal piece thing before. Some of them have not gone over well. Some of them have gone over okay. Um, I don't think this is one of the better ones that's gone over okay. It's very much like I have something printed on a cape. Boom, here it is. Um, I, in no way, shape, or a fashion, see how the bodysuit and stuff in the middle goes with the background. Um, uh, and I think that's just a color choice thing for me. Um, I feel like that I wish that the background, I wish that the, if it was the same, like, pattern on the bodysuit, but, I mean, on the bodysuit, but it was different colors, and I think it probably would have read a little bit better, but it looks like you're not vacationing in the place that's on this, on this flyer behind you. Um... Also, another thing, too, um, I grew up as a big American Sex Top Model fan. 
Um, I don't know if you all remember, but there was an episode. I think it was uh, a top four uh, for one of the earlier cycles where they went uh, to Brazil. Uh, mm-hmm. That was the international location. And part of the challenge is they had to find the girl from Ipanema. And they had to go through this whole little like journey thing of like finding out about her and all this other kind of stuff. And I remember the biggest thing about it was one of the things they had to do is they had to get a bird of paradise flower mm-hmm. and they had to take that to the, the, the girl that ended up being the girl from Ipanema. And so when they when they kept saying multiple times she was from Ipanema and made that reference of the girl from Ipanema and then we have this show about roots, I'm thinking I'm gonna see some bird of paradise flowers. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it's gonna be something like that. Mm-hmm. This looks like you're standing in a bodysuit in front of a like a painting of Epcot or something, like at like a fairgrounds or something. It's not giving me Ipanema from this. And I mean, I'm not from Ipanema, but this isn't making me look, making me think that I know what it looks like anymore now. So um, she, she's definitely giving you the anti version of the girl from Ipanema. Like she is, yeah. she's like, I don't want to be the girl, the bird of paradise girl. I'm gonna be the anti girl. Like it was just, yeah, it just didn't. I think the main thing for me was the fact that the the the, the bodysuit look. And all the aesthetics and accessories and stuff that go with the bodysuit look like they should go on a different backdrop. It just like mm-hmm. those two things are very, yeah, they just don't combine for me. So it's hard for me to look at them as one continuous like thing. I either like the background or I like the bodysuit, but the two don't go together for me. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Of course, of course David. I gave her a 67. I gave her a I'll give her 66. I really like the cape yeah. and I really like clavicle up. So I'm going to give it a 65. 64? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so you took 64 and divided it by two. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Naza, 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 Naza. Now, Miss Naza, <laughs> I have to say something because you are on my team. I did claim you. I did draft you. Um, and I also want to say this to uh, any of the Brazilian people that are watching this video, more specifically the Brazilian Beehive. Um, as a member of the American Beehive, I just want to give my condolences to you all. Um, Twitter and the world has been alight. Uh, over the recent uh, uh, revelation that you will not be able to get to see the Renaissance World Tour this year. I am so sorry. Mm. Um, I felt like this look was so, like, I literally, that was the first thing I thought when I saw this, is that, oh, she's going to go to the Renaissance World Tour. And I was like, oh, crap, wait, she's not going to Brazil. And I was like, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I don't speak for mother. I wish that you all would be able to get to see her because the Brazilian behind lives up for Beyonce shit almost more than the American ones do. Um, but I feel like this was very sickening honoring of mother and um, be high forever. Yeah, uh, I, I do like this. Um, I think my problem is that I've seen it done a little bit better recently. Like we saw a queen do something similar in Mexico, but in red. Um, which I love that look. Uh, so I can't help but compare this a little bit, and I still do like it. And I think it it did the job. It it was on par with most of the other ones this night. They were all pretty close to me, honestly, except for Melazina. Um, but yeah, I I, I like this. It, she was able to work this pretty well on the runway, especially with all that fringe. So yeah, she she did a good job. This was this was definitely better than her entrance look. I love movement on the runway, and this gave me movement on the runway. It mm-hmm. was it was a lot of movement. I would have probably I would have wanted the hat, maybe in denim as well, but the sparkles denim, sparkly denim like that. But this is fine. I do see Beehive World Renaissance tour. Like she is going, and she got um, Club Renaissance tickets, and so she was going to make sure Beyonce saw her in all of her glory. And it's it's nice. I I do enjoy it. I I I we've seen some really really good denim looks. We've seen some really not so great denim looks, but this is one of the ones that's on the better side of the denim looks. So I appreciate it. I love this. 
I love this look. And I know we've seen denim looks very, very recently. I'm doing my best not to compare because it is a completely different situation. But I love this. She looks so damn good in this. The movement, Lana, like you were saying, that's my mm -hmm. favorite part of this whole thing. At the way everything is cut, the way that the chaps are cut with the panty, with the bandeau top, with the jacket. Girl, Miss Naza. And can we say this? There have been many, many times when, and this is no shade towards Naza, and this is not me trying to read her or anything, but there have been many, many times when the girls that aren't the most real skinny stick girls mm -hmm. go out and they wear multiple piece outfits and stuff. Yep. And people always comment on the fit not being right or whatever. Every single thing she wore fit, fit to perfectly. perfectly. And I was like, I was so happy for that because yep. I was like, I in no way wanted them to read her for that and be like, the chaps is a little bulgy or like bunchy around here or this part didn't fully look like it fit. Everything like couldn't fit her. For me, she looked like every single year around festival time, around uh, Coachella and stuff like that, where you see all the Instagram influencers and the beauty influencers and stuff going to Coachella and all these elaborate outfits, that's very much what he gave me. This is like so something that I would see James Charles or, or one of those other like uh, Manny MUA or, or Patrick uh, Patrick Starr, any of those uh, beauty uh, beauty gurus uh, wearing at Coachella. Real mm -hmm. easy. Really, yeah. that was the reason why I said it gave me Renaissance vibes. I was like, I've seen people going, I've seen so mm -hmm. many people to outfits of what they're wearing to the concert, and everyone's stuff has all come down to the three basic things: rhinestones, mirrors, and denim. It's only been those yeah. three things is put together to make everybody's outfits. If it hasn't been an Ivy Park like brand or something mm -hmm. like that, that's been the easiest thing for everybody to wear. And so I, that's yeah. when I saw this. I was like, I like this. I was like, this yeah. is giving like a fun tour festival outfit. You know what I mean? It's giving party. It's giving you're a fun time, but also you're that bitch. I'm like yeah. party. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree, Logan. The fact that it fits and yeah, you it fits perfectly. Every little piece, every piece of it fits like so you can't be like, oh, you know, she's a bigger girl and all oh, that's bunching here or it didn't fit right here or she need to cover that up because it don't look Everything about this look looks really good and fits to perfection. And I think that's Naza is one of those thicker girls that understands that. And that's what I love because I too was very sometimes very um critical of some of the bigger girls who would you know you're a bigger girl. You have to make sure the stuff fits right for you and they don't take the time to make the it fit perfectly because everybody's going to always be extra critical because you're a bigger girl so yeah. you don't give them nothing to criticize you about and this she made sure she ain't give us nothing to criticize nothing her like on. the way up of how high up she has the yep. pants and then yep. how she has some sense so she's giving herself a waist yep. so that it doesn't look like she's just straight up and down like yep. she understands her body and she understands how to wear her clothes and i it's like beautiful that. it's beautiful so I guess we're at the score, Steve. Um, I'm going to give this a 71. My cup is full on this look because I think she looks fantastic in it. My cup is also full. Duh. Period. Ooh, okay. Well, yes, period. Duh. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Very loud. This is... <sighs> Me this is no, this is, oh this is, Lord Jesus. This is Miranda. This is Miranda. This is Miranda. Okay, thank God. I got you're yeah. right. You're I'm right. sorry. We're I'm still sorry, learning. We're still learning. I'm still learning. learning. Yeah. They, so, so, my right. thoughts on this um, I think there's a lot of interesting things happening, but there's a lot of interesting things happening. Um, and it just leaves me with a lot of questions. Like, I don't really understand anything that's happening, really. Like, I want to know more about it. It's got me intrigued. But like one of the judges said, like, yeah, she probably should have edited it. And she was, like, screwing something on her waist. I think it's like a hose, maybe. Water hose. It's supposed to be, okay. like, a garden hose wrapped around her waist. It was supposed yeah. to be, like, the, the you know, like, the old handle on, okay. the, on the hose outside. It was that right. on the side where, like, I guess the nozzle's supposed to be. Yeah. 
Okay. So uh, maybe I was too focused on watching it instead of reading it, but I was just confused by a lot of things. But that doesn't mean I don't like it. I mm -hmm. do like it. I wanted to like it more. I think the actual garment itself is giving me a well done design challenge look. Like it looks like she had this fabric and she's like, let me put this together. So it does look good. I really am intrigued by the headpiece and her makeup is, is very intriguing as well. I'm just using intriguing because like I said, it, it, it just really piqued my interest and left me with a lot of questions. So I'm not sure if I love it, but I do like it. I, I kind of agree. It, it it left me with wondering more, it, like I said, more questions than answers. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it's one of those, like a movie where you're like, I don't know if I get the ending or is it a cliffhanger? Is it a part two to this? this but I art enjoy, house, art right, house movie. <laughs> it's like, but I enjoyed the movie, but I don't know if I get the movie. And so this is this outfit. I enjoy the outfit, but I don't know if I get entirely get it and like what does the hose represent why are we you know why do we have a garden hose around what does that have to do with the headpiece because the headpiece is very intriguing and very interesting but what is it what does that have to do with the, what you're wearing and is like what is this green thing at the foot like at the bottom of it it leaves me with so many questions and not enough answers but it doesn't turn me off to the point where I'm like, I hate it. I don't. She might, she might be too smart for her own good. Right. I think it was yeah. very. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Like, I I please, to... please let us know in the comments. Like, please, someone explain it. Right. I would please. love to. I would love to know more as well. Like, and explain it to me like I'm in kindergarten and very, very slow <laughs> because I really don't know, and I really want to know. So give me the very, the books for dummies version of this because I don't understand it but I'm still intrigued by it because it's like it's pieces that I'm like okay but mm. like I think the print is gorgeous it gives me very stained glass window type print and I like it but I want to know what does it have to do with the holes what does it have to do with the headpiece what does it have to do with this green thing at the bottom what does it have to do with the, the earring part that she's wearing I want to know what it all means so I'm in the same boat as Lana. I did not really understand a single part of this outfit. I do not care in the slightest. I think this is one of the coolest things I've seen on Drag Race in a really long time. I really enjoyed it. Just every part of it from the headpiece to the weird, like off center um, lips to the print, to the hose, to the one legging, to the way the dress is cut. Like I, I'm so intrigued by this and I really enjoy it. A standing alone as a look, not judging it based on any sort of reference point. I love this. I really enjoy it. This, I think, might have mm, it might have been my favorite thing on the runway, if I'm being honest. I just I all of it together makes sense without knowing the references for me. I really like it. Yeah. It's definitely one of my favorites on this runway for sure. It's not mine. Um, yeah, for me, this is a swing and a miss. Um, I, I, I do not, I, I can't put together what this is supposed to be. And I feel like even after them explaining it, I still kind of was left with questions as to like, okay, so why is that there? But then why is this there? And I think the issue I have too is it doesn't seem like, I feel like there's a level of cohesion that's kind of missing. I, I, I get the kind of asymmetry of the dress going off to one side, but I don't understand why it looks like she only has on one leg garter. Um, I just, yeah, I don't, it's, it's not my favorite. And you wanna know something that sucks too? It's because when we did the Instagram videos, Miranda was shitting on the hoes. I remember this was the hoes and this was Miranda. And she was shitting <laughs> upon the hoes. Available on our social media. Go follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at the Cup Pod. Sorry, Eve. Now she doesn't look constipated. Why aren't you shitting, girl? What happened? You need some Metamucil? Some uh, Miralax? Milk of magnesium? The hose is too tight. It's 
it's constricting her intestines. That's probably the what hose. It is the the hose is too tight, so she can't <laughs> shit on the hose. <laughs> oh, it's an extra level. <laughs> Loosen your hose. She was trying. We saw her twisting. Try some ammo or something. Loosen, loosen it up. Score! Because it's just a little too uptight. <laughs> Look, I still like this. I'm giving it a 70. <laughs> oh, we got to skip Lonnie. I'll, I'll go next, and I'm giving it uh, a 55. A shitty Me 55. Meanwhile, my cup is full. There we go. Of what? She ate shit. Full ammo. That's what it's full of. Full ammo. That's probably why. Okay. Oh, no. Look at the look on her face. It even looks like she's trying to shit. Why she said that? Stop it. Trying to push it out. And it ain't coming out. It just didn't come out. Oh, my God. Oh. You can and you will. Oh, <laughs> you oh, can God. and you will. What are you, is your score for Miranda? Oh, I feel like it is an 85 for me. <laughs> Thank you, Lana. Oh, she's <laughs> Next Christ. up, Aquarella. I hate y'all so much. I hate this whole crew so much. <laughs> no, you don't. I hate y'all so much in my No, you don't. In my real life, I hate you so <laughs> much. <laughs> In my real life, I hate you so no. much. Oh my god! Oh, well, you have time to recover while David talks about Aquarella. Okay. Yes. Aquarella. So, speaking of hate, I don't hate this at all. Um, I I think this is a huge improvement from her entrance look. Um, I really like the shape of this on her body. Like, there are things that are simple about it, but it still really works for me. The the fabric, I really am into this fabric like this was such a huge step up and yeah i don't know what's going on with the head thing if anybody knows please let please let me know if you all don't know please tell us in the comments um but even with that i think she looked great like this really like it gave her a great drag shape and that's what i love to see i want to see drag in my drag and she gave me drag so i like it one of my I, favorites i love this look too I really did. I thought she looked great. I thought it was interesting shapes. What what, what could what, what could have been a simple outfit? She gave us interesting shapes with it. Like I love that sleeve on the arm sleeve and then the glove. And then I like the the different parts of the dress. How it was wavy and up and down and all of that. I think the pattern was cute. Um, I don't know what the thing is on the head either, but it's just y'all tell me what that reference is supposed to mean. Um, but I love her makeup in this too because I love the way the makeup is like she uses her glasses as a point of like it's 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 part of it's part of the whole look like it's not like oh she put this makeup on and then wearing and she's just wearing glasses it's like no the the glasses like the way it comes out for her eyes in that corner it's really cute I think I think this is a really good look for Aquarella it makes me intrigued to see what else she can do and if her staff, because this is way different from her entrance look, which definitely need, should be. But the fact that we're seeing she can give us that whole clown look and then turn around and give us this, it's it makes me wonder what else she got in her bag. So I'm interested. I love this. I think it's giving interesting angular movements. I love the glove. I love the cut. I love the hat. I love the boot. I love all the fabrics being the same. I love that her, the glasses give her makeup a point of emphasis. I really enjoy it. I'm going to keep it brief. I love this. Okay. Things I like. Uh, this, to me, is a step up from her entrance look. Things I don't like. Everything else. Once again, I am not a fan of this look. And these are my reasonings as to why. One, I don't know if I'm going to have to have this battle with Aquarella for the entirety of the season. But once again, I do not like that wig. 
that wig is once again looking like a spirit Halloween wig right out of a bag. I don't know if it is the shade of the wigs or if it is how the wigs are constructed or just the quality of the wigs, but they just look very synthetic-y. And I'm just kind of like, Ugh, I wish that maybe you had something that was like an updo or a shorter style or something different. It just didn't do that for me. Um, I like all of the print on print, but I think that the downside for this outfit is I feel like that I personally have seen a lot of drag entertainers in outfits that kind of similarly have this aesthetic where it's like a corsety top slash dress with matching arm cuffs and matching boots, but they're just always in either a different fabric or a different color or something like that. Candy Muse is very famous for almost having half her damn wardrobe be that. Um, so that was also one thing that I saw right when this came out. I was like, this looks like a Candy Muse outfit. Like, I could easily see Candy walking down the runway in this. Um, which also brings up another thing that is a downside for me, is when it comes to these outfits that look like it's all one kind of hard material dress that has a corset built into it, a lot of times, me personally, I wish that it was done separately and the corset wasn't built in because I feel like that only snatches you so far. And I feel like that I wish that her waist was just a little bit more tighter and a little bit more nipped in to really exaggerate that shape a little bit more. It's not that she doesn't have a shape. It's just like, it's, 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 oh, it's just like on, you know what I mean? It's not, she's not snatched for me. It's just fitting her well, which isn't bad, but it's like with that kind of a hard, rigid material, it really looks so much better to me. I feel like when your angles are a lot more clearly defined, because if not, then you're going to end up into looking like you have like this hard front of paper all the way across like the whole front of you, which could have easily happened if if it, if it didn't have any kind of uh, give in the middle whatsoever. I just wanted to have a little bit more. Um, and then also too, the other thing that I didn't care for is like what you said, Lana, is the fact that this is like a complete 360 from her entrance look, which I mean, of course I didn't like her entrance look, but also at the same time, this doesn't look like anything that actually belongs to her. This looks like she borrowed this from somebody. You know what I mean? Like for me personally, it looks like she needed things for Drag Race and someone gave her this to wear. Um, I don't know if this would be part of her actual drag collection. Like she would go out on stage and perform in this, you know? Um, if she's more used to performing in the stuff and wearing the stuff that she did when she came in the entrance look, this is kind of a real departure from that. So I'm still trying to figure out who Aquarella is. Um, um, if you're gonna be clown, baby, be clown 24 seven. Um, I mean, you can, you can give us glamor clown. Jimbo's done it many times. Um, I don't feel like this gave Glamour Clown. This gave very, like, stock drag, and it didn't really have a lot of personality in it for me. Scores? Um, I give it a 74. I still liked it. I gave it a 90. I'm also going to give it a 90. I'll be giving it a 45. <laughs> And last of our runways is Diva Moore. Uh oh. And I wish uh, she was giving Diva less. David? Okay. Well, I like the level she's giving. So we've seen we've seen a lot of cow looks over the years. I think she added quite a bit of like personality to this. Like I really like the actual outfit isn't isn't giving cow it's giving the pastures it's giving the sky and i really like the background that she has in her headpiece uh it's a cute wig good makeup i actually really like this i thought this was a success lana how dare you um but oh no i this this was my favorite on the runway tonight mm -mm. Lana. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. I um, I didn't. No, I didn't. I mm, it's it's. I didn't. I don't. It, Mary Moo Cow just didn't do it for me. It just didn't do it for me. I, I, yeah, it's doing this weird thing. Um, yeah, I I don't know. It's I, I didn't. I just don't like it. That's it. I don't, I just don't like it. I don't, no explanation. I, I I just don't like it. <sighs> um, 
No. No, not really. Why is your hair orange? Why do you have this sun headpiece? Why is it that shape? Why are you only giving cow in the uh, bodysuit you have under this? Why can I not see any of the patterning on your skirt? Why does your face kind of look ashy? And I'm not saying it from this photo. I'm saying it from the runway. Um, um, I wish she was doing Diva much less. Eve. Well, in a surprising turn of events, I agree with David. Yay. <laughs> this was my favorite look on the right way. <laughs> It was. It was mine too. Taste. I'm a cow, bitch. I'm a cow. Go moo, moo. I live for it. I live for it. More I like boo. I live for it. What you gave me was <laughs> boo, not moo. What you gave me was like anthropomorphic, if you know what that is, mm -hmm. where it's animals that have human characteristics. It's so an it animorph. Think of like it made me think <laughs> of like if there was a DreamWorks movie of like, like if Pippi Longstocking was a DreamWorks movie, but like the cow was actually Pippi Longstocking or something. So like that's just what this gave me. It gave me cartoon movie character, and I could really see that. Like her name is Bessie the cow or whatever, and she's like, it's very much giving me Disney Pixar movie. She lives in a whole world where everybody is cow. She's going to school. She living her life. She live on the prairie, and she, I don't know, goes to a whole new school where everybody is, I don't know, bulls or whatever. I don't know. Like, it was just giving. It was very, very, very cutesy to me. Um, I love the little touches of, like, just the dress and the hair because all of that, I felt like, went with this whole, like, milkmaid-type aesthetic and look. But she was doing it as the actual cow, so I thought that was a, a cute spin on it. Um, and I also feel like that if, there, if she would have done this look but somehow inverted the patterns like let's say that the dress was the cow print and then the bodysuit was the sky and stuff i don't think it would have looked as well because mm -hmm. they would have been like i don't get yeah i feel like that would have been a little bit weirder um looking i yeah i honestly did not mind this i thought this was yeah. very concept i feel like this is something that manila luzon would have done like if you easily set up and had like a dairy category for something, I could easily see Manila coming out as an actual damn cow. She's come out as a bunny for a leather uh, uh, challenge before. You know what I mean? She's come out as a pineapple. So that's why I was like, somebody coming out as a cow, that's not phasing me. Um, and it makes sense too. Like the concept is so easy to get. Like I do not understand why anybody would have questions about why this, why that, why that. I don't understand. It's very well, obvious. Like it's the pasture in the skies. It's the the landscape that a cow sees and lives and breathes. It's a she's stunning. a rural girl. She's like mm. it's very much the equivalent of like if she was like one of those girls that lives out in a farm in the middle of nowhere and all she does is milk cows with her family and all this other kind of stuff. So yes, yeah, it's very it's very Utica esque to me of you being like a small town queen where the population is probably twelve people. You know what I mean, and you're related to half of them. And 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 this is what you do. Y'all taking care of farm life, and you're doing all that rural type stuff. Like that's very much what okay. this gave me from her. Of like that's her roots. Is okay. she's the she's that girl, the, the down home the girl. girl. And I was like, okay, okay cute. I mean, uh, I will. I'm taking all of what you're saying into consideration. <laughs> I mean, I still don't think it's my favorite look, but it makes more sense to me now. Right. And maybe it's not as horrible as I thought it was when I now listening to the explanation i won't plead it but it's still not my favorite but it, right. I, I, it makes, the it, out. it makes know. sense it, it makes sense to me now it's uh, i'm understanding it now more the more y'all talk about it and i hear the explanation yeah because like so. i said the style of the dress and the hair just gave me very pippy long stocking very heidi very young girl that lives out in the rural countryside with her grandma and her granddad and you know what i mean and they like that kind of thing like very dutch and swedish very that like it gave off okay. very that kind of windmills and daffodils and and all of that stuff like okay yeah all right. well, then if i'm being honest if i'm being honest 
uh, if any of these tell me what the queen's roots are, it's this one. Like, yeah. I know what your roots are. Um, my score was a 78. Okay. I will give it a nice 55. 65. These are way I, higher than I expected. I, I mean, it's true. Uh, I will give this a 95. Like I say, I'm not a, 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 a immovable object when it comes to Fair. things. If Same. I hear, if I see something that I don't get, and the more y'all explain it, the more I'm sitting here looking at it, yeah. I will score it accordingly. And yeah, be love fair that. to the to the. Right. I didn't like it right out when I first right. saw it. I, I outright didn't like it. And Listen I would. I feel like that I would wear something along this lines or something concept wise along this, depending on like what the category would be that I was doing or whatever. But maybe the silhouette would be different or something. Mm -hmm. But I do like the. I do like the mindset of where she was going. Right. Like, her mm -hmm. being the cow in the in the pasture right. or whatever, da, da, da. I'm like, I'd rather mm -hmm. do something that might be more, a little bit more couture. It might be like a gown, you know what I mean? As opposed to just a tight think underneath or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think I would like it a lot more if it was a gown. Yeah. I think that's where I'm at with it. it Concept wise, I get it now. And I'm with Lana. It's like, I I scored it a lot higher than I thought I was going to. Me too. But I, I, I get it now. Hearing someone else talk about it so positively, I get it. Yeah, it's, it 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 is give because it, it's giving me the milkmaid, but as the cow, the milkmaid right. is the cow, so it makes sense to me. And now. I wish it was more like milkmaid, like maybe not to the floor, but like maybe like brushing the floor or like there's a couple inches, so we still see the cow print legging, right? Or right. she just I just wanted some milk, like come out with the milk bucket or whatever. But yeah, okay. I think that's what, I think that's what the, she got. The no, that's go full Jimbo to... on us. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't but know. maybe some more cow like aesthetic. Yeah. Maybe, like yeah, a yeah. bell or, or a nose thing. Right. Or something like that. Something. Yeah. Video look. Well, we talked a little bit about the video already. If we mm -hmm. want to give any other uh, ideas and concepts. <sighs> There was no Every concept. It was a chop except for Davina <laughs> DeCampo. I mean, Miranda. I was going to say a red wig and a silver outfit. I do think. <laughs> I do think. I will say this, though. When they were showing everybody, Nas, of course, had the most personality. Mm -hmm. There was one shot, only one, that first shot that they got of Melozina. When she, I guess, that I walked across the back wall and it just flung that hair to one side. And she didn't even say it. She just flipped it. I said, Oh, she's gonna turn it. I was like, she's Melazina gonna turn it. She sparkle. Turn it. And, and then she didn't. Happen. No. But I, I felt I was I was like I, like I said, RuPaul's Drag Race likes to edge us. And I was literally sitting there on the edge the entire time of this video of like, when is it gonna really kick off? And it did. Yeah, and this like, this, this was work. not not this was not good. I was not excited about this and I watched it twice just because I wanted to make sure I w was not uh, it, it didn't do what it needed to be do. It didn't Why do. were they laying on random things? Yeah. It's like they put them in the set and they just said lay. But Cheetah is laying on stairs. Like, yep. <laughs> like laying on stairs. I'm like, all the all backs must be screwed the hell up. Somebody was laying on car parts and stuff. And it's not even like they're doing sexily. It's like, they're, it's like they fell out the sky on it. <laughs> And then someone just took a video of them, like, oh, are you okay? And you're like laying on the stairs, like, uh. I mean, but it was just them doing random things, like laying on stairs, grabbing a a, a, a chain fence and turning around and getting a, touching this wall. And it was just like so they, very, very rudimentary video making. Like, I don't know who did this video, but it wouldn't even get on like yo mtv raps or bet after dark uncensored like it's the very bare you you know those local channels that do local artist videos and the local artist is up there in the middle of the downtown area running up and down cars the street still cars by. still going by people still talking behind them and they just like I'm singing my song, doing this thing, right? It's so, uh, like, they did that on their iPhone, and even not the newest iPhones, but the old iPhones, because the production value was so 
bad in this video. It didn't do these girls any justice. I don't know if it's their fault mm. or if it's production fault. I think it's, it's production. Bad. I'm yeah, not gonna. Bad. I'm not gonna say I. I don't think it was the queens. I think the queens did the absolute best they could with what they were given. Uh, the only look I really enjoyed, honestly, was uh, Miranda. Um, I will say, though, my favorite verse by far... I had two verses that I thought were very, very successful. And that was Aquarella and Naza. Yeah. Those were the only two where I really said, I know what you're about. And verse I, I Verse-wise. I hear what you're saying. I understand what kind of queen you are. Your looks are giving me, you know, something similar. Um... This Aquarella look was fine. Naza had a good look. I will say as well, I thought Miranda and Naza had really good looks here. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of substance from anyone else's verses. And especially my least favorite verse, honestly, was Diva. I was like, I don't know what, like, oh, you're, I, no. I, I just, I learned nothing about her from her verse. Um, so I'll I'll try to be pretty quick with this. So one of my issues with this music video, as far as the production goes, is so we clearly had two cameras, two main cameras, one in the sky and one eye level. And it seemed like every time the queens were looking up, they would show the eye level one. And then they would look down and then they'd show the the sky level one. And I'm like, can you just please like whichever one? What way do you mean, looking? David? I don't think it was that distracting. <laughs> I think it was pretty okay. I'm not that sure what you're what? talking about, David. What? No. Huh? Um, <laughs> yeah, so that bugged me. But um, there were things, there were at least some things I liked about everybody and then things that I didn't like about everybody. So the person that drew my eye the most was Miranda. Like every time she was on camera, she commanded my attention. And there's it's just something about her her air, her confidence. I don't know but she just demands me to look right at her. So for me, she was definitely one of my favorites in this music video. Um, Melusine, I I really like her voice. She had a good singing voice. So that's what I liked about her. Like most of them rapped or, or did some like very like meek singing, but I thought she actually sounded really good. I did not like what she was wearing though. I didn't Speaking, like nobody singing. Uh, uh, I mean, listen to it again. She, she wasn't bad. No, she, I listened to it twice. I, don't, no. I mean, but that's just me being who I am about music. I don't think she had a, fair, her fair. voice. is not. Mm. It wasn't spectacular. It was just a lot better than everybody else. Uh, speaking of not looking good, though, uh, Diva Moore, like, she, she looked the roughest for me in this. I did not mind her verse. I really liked the flow of her of her delivery. Um, I didn't pay attention to the lyrics, to be honest. Uh, Bettina, she probably faded the most for me. Like, she didn't stand out negatively or positively for me, which probably is more of a negative thing because you want to stand out. Um, Aquarella, I would agree. She had my favorite verse. I really liked how it sounded. I liked how it flowed, how it sped up. Um, what I liked about Naza, though, is I felt like she fit the music video with how she looked the best. Um, it almost gave me like, oh no, she better don't music video. And she looked like she was ready for that kind of music video, like the graffiti background. And she just looked youthful and like she would fit into this music video. And I don't know if everybody else got the memo for what the background would be like. So that was my overall thoughts. And it was super hard for me to pick tops and bottoms. <laughs> super hard. Okay. I'm going to run through mine super quick. Uh, Miranda, Davina the Campo, liked her. Uh... Melusina, like the hair, like the headband, bodysuit did not go with any of it. It was very much giving me, I'm going to go out and, and do some kind of butt kick routine on stage in just a leotard. I needed more. Diva, I needed less. Uh, but Kina, who is the name? Okay. That Pacina. dude. Pacina. David Bowie. Oh, David yes. Bowie. That she looks like a cracked out David Bowie. Um... That is the driest David Bowie I've ever seen in my entire damn life. They need water or lotion or both. Um, Aquarella, I need another face shape because you show me three of the same face shapes just in different colors the entire episode. I just need a different face shape, baby. Um, Naza, for me, gave the most... Um, uh, 
I guess I'd say not, I guess I'd say um, she was the most comfortable on camera. That's what I would say. I feel like that that just came across very easily, that Naza was not in any way intimidated by being on camera. She was gonna be a little bit flirty. She was gonna show a little personality. I feel like that some of the other girls were so worried about giving an aesthetic of looking like this, you're in this music video and da 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 da. And Naza was like, I'm just Naza. I'm just having a fun time. I'm just cute. I'm just, that. you know what I mean? And it just worked. It looked like she wasn't trying as hard and it came off well. And everybody else looked like they were trying harder and it looked like they were trying too hard. Um, and so it's funny that Naza ended up being, I guess, one of the standouts of the whole group because I don't think Naza did amazing. I also feel like that if Naza would have been in the group with all of the rest of the girls, she possibly would have just been safe. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it was because of the fact that none of the other girls were really firing off on all cylinders that she ended up being the one that was kind of front running. So. Fab. Well, we have no results to talk about because we didn't get any. <laughs> because uh, to, with 10 minutes to go in the episode, they said, okay, group two, walk in and do your entrances. And I was like, oh, okay, work. <laughs> My favorite part of that whole thing was the to how Greg told them that they were not getting any results. And it was kind of yeah. like, you actually think I will give uh, to you results without the whole family here? I loved it. I was like, <laughs> I love. I loved Greg on the during the judges' critiques who when she just goes, "I have not made my decisions." <laughs> I'm like, we better work, Greg. I, I love so, that. can I also uh, say as well that I knew for a 350 percent fact because when you pay attention to Drag Race production, like my nosy ass does. You have to listen to every single little offhanded thing or comment mm -hmm. that any of them may try to say. And I heard her say right at the beginning, at the end of this episode, one of you may be going home. She said may. And the minute she said may, I said nobody's going home this episode. Period. Point blank. They don't softly allude to anything on Drag Race unless it's going to come up later. And then I think one of the other girls, I think it might've been Melusina, uh, um, maybe at the beginning, right when they were getting ready for the runway or whatever, uh, said that like, oh, it's elimination day, da, 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 da. And I think she said it too. And one of us may be going home. I'm like, oh, y'all saying may again? I was like, yeah, no one's going home. So they, filmed these, so they filmed these confessionals after y'all found out that we're right. gonna wait for group two to perform. And then we're gonna make you come back in the same runway look with the exact same makeup uh, and the exact same hair once the second group has done two yeah. days later, because we also found out from um, some article somewhere that every single episode was filmed in two days for this season. Mm -hmm. So production yeah. for this season was like three weeks at most, which is mm -hmm. interesting, but- 12 episodes, 24 days. Yeah. No breaks. I guess no not. Days? I, I guess. Well, they Probably they not, also filmed honestly. Mexico. Bra they filmed Mexico, Brazil, and Germany back to back to back. Mm -hmm. They had to so, get them in and get them out. Get them in and get them out. Yeah, they had out. probably like four that. months to film three Drag Race franchises. And they said, boom, boom, boom. No off days. Everybody's working. Boom. PAs, this is all the work you're going to do for this year. Done. <laughs> I, think, I think also that too lends itself to kind of the the quote unquote pressure cooker that drag race is, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You don't get a chance yeah. to have a mini break in between for you to breathe and figure stuff out. It's like, no, it's every single challenge back, 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 go. You know? And that's why a lot of queens sit there and like, I am so tired. I am mm -hmm. very tired. Like we even at the end all of the, every, every season, every season. season, they say like, I watched, like I said, I watched Mexico's reunion and they were like, Galavaro was like, I am so tired. It's like they don't get any breaks. It's just like boom, boom, boom. You got to do it, and that's where the pressure comes in, and that's why people like Moon say, "I can't take this. I need to walk away because this mental is is too much for my mental. It's too much." And some people can hold it out through it, and some people can't. And it's just like it is what it is. But if you go go on Drag Race, this is what you signing up for. You signing up yeah. for back to back to back, shaboom, to catch cat, and no breaks in between. And it's like either you there all the way or you're not. 
Right. And if you I mean, realize you're not, take care of your mental health. Take care of your yourself. Health is the most important. Yeah. It is the most so, important. I'm like, I'm, it doesn't matter who you are or how you rank or how well you do or don't do. That can affect anybody. Yep. Like, um, had a who was it? Just recently came out and said that they were very, very strongly. They were randomly thinking about quitting their season. Mm. Um, that they were on uh, Brooklyn Heights. Yeah. Mm. Then at Roscoe's. Uh, that it got to the finale and she was so tired and so drained. She was just like, what if I just don't show up? Yeah. Wow. Like, what, 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 what will happen? You know what I mean? Because I don't know if I can keep going, you know? And I mean, she did. And, and she ended up hosting Canada's Drag Race afterwards and all those other kind of things. But at the same time, it, it still lends to say that no matter where you are in your drag journey or who you are as a drag entertainer, we all still have these thoughts mm -hmm. of, Am I giving enough? Am I doing to know? Am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? Am I am I losing myself in this? All those things are completely valid, and you just mm -hmm. have to you just have to uh, keep focus on yourself and why you do what you do, yep. um, and use that to propel you forward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, um, based on the challenge this week, what would everybody's top two, middle two, and bottom two be? I can oh, go first since I'm asking. Yes, of this group, just based on this week, not based on how much you like them overall. Um, but for me, based on the challenge, I probably would have had Aquarella and um, Miranda as the top two. And then I would have had Naza and Melazina in the safe area. And then the bottom two probably would have been Diva and Bettina for me. Yeah, for me, it's probably Naza and Aquarella, the top two. And Miranda and... Miss, yeah, Miss, Miss Sparkle in the in the middle, and then Latina and Diva at the bottom. Okay, um, I'm trying to think because I'm like, damn. Um, my bottom would have been. I, I can start backwards, child. Let's see who's left. Um, my bottom would have been Bettina. Bettina, right? Bettina and Bettina and Aquarella. Okay. Um, my safes would have been. Melusina and Miranda. So that would have made my top two. Ooh, no. Oh, well, I guess. Yeah, my top two would have been Diva and Nava. And I think for me, it was one of those things where it was like, for me, I felt like the person who did the best out of the, out of the music video was Nazla, and that was just it, hands down. But for me, I felt like the, the one that did the best on the, the two that did the best on the runway were Nazla and Diva. And I feel like that's why I kept getting into like a well kind of a situation because it's like I wanted to put one in a higher position, but then I did not like that mm -hmm. runway at all. You know what I mean? So I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. I think I, my top two would have been, my number one would have been Naza, no question. Yeah. For me. My top two, I think, would have been Naza and Miranda. I would have had. Bacina and Aquarella safe. And I think my bottom two would have been Melu and Diva. Okay. We're all over the board here. <laughs> I kind of love that, honestly. Me too. It was um, hard to judge, though, to be honest. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Because next week, we got six more girls to talk about. We got another music video. Uh, it's probably going to be a bit of a carbon copy episode, but then we're finally going to get results. So I'm excited. I'm excited for the season. I'm excited to see what this second group of girls gives. Um, and she says sashay away in the preview. So. so someone's going home. We don't know if it's one person. We don't know if it's two people. We don't know if it's. It could be Greg. Hell, she be like, I quit. It could be Bye. Greg. Greg could eliminate herself. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Um, but with all of that being said, thank you for joining us for our two and a half hours of power <laughs> talking about the premiere of Drag Race Brazil. Look, it's a premiere. I see it's the a premieres. Premiere. 
premieres, they deserve the best, and they deserve all of it. So and I think next long. week we'll probably it'll probably be about the same. I'm just probably. gonna be honest right now. Probably. But if you made it this far in the episode, thank you so much for watching us. Um, make sure to hit all the buttons on your preferred audio or visual platform that say you support us because we support you and we love you. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at the Cut Pod for all of the most up to date cup news and our funny moments because we are some funny bitches talking about Miranda shitting on the hose. Um, <laughs> there's probably gonna be another clip from this episode about the hose and the hose. Um, <laughs> you can also follow the four of us on Twitter. Uh, most of what we're talking about is Big Brother US and Drag Race. So if those things interest you, go follow and make sure to get your merch while you're down there in the description below. We do ship internationally, so there are no excuses. And with all that being said, cheers. Cheers. Bye bye now. Subscribe. 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 Bye bye.